Um, just to start off, it's Andrea Young uh, interviewing uh, Mr. Charlie Laddermilk with Teresa Taylor and Bob Hope. Bob Hope. Bob Hope, not the comedian. No. And um, w yeah, so the purpose of uh, of this story is really to look at what were the. I mean, the, I think race relations are an important ingredient of what has made Atlanta, you know, kind of be able to prosper to grow from, you know, the town it was when you were born here to what it is now. And so the, the, the race relations is obviously an important component of it. But it's also the other, you know, other kinds of um, policy choices, other kinds of decisions about what to invest in, you know, like MARTA would be something we want to, you know, talk to you about, the, um, the importance of that as, as making Atlanta, you know, kind of a, 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 a national and international kind of city, um, the way that the politics has has evolved and uh, the role of the the part the way the business the role that the business community has played both in terms of the relationships with the black community but also in terms of just being community minded you know just you know having an idea about how you work together to grow the city. How many days do we have? To do? <laughs> <laughs> well, we can take as much time as you're willing to give us. Yeah. So we will. We're gonna. We'll start off with this, but um, <clears throat> you know, as as uh, much time as you want to spend talking about it, <laughs> we're happy to do it. But um, wh where we've been starting is just by saying why you know why you decided to make your business and career in Atlanta. Well, I started there. I, let me just say, I was raised in a blue-collar area. My father had a fourth-grade education. My mother's the one that uh, was very determined that, uh, that my brother and myself were going to, as she put it, make something of, myself, of ourselves. And uh, she worked my uh, three jobs. Back in those days, uh, my mother stayed at home, uh, basically, but she she saw that she had to go out and work get, get, get us through. My dad was, was very happy to finish high school and, and got a good job like he had, which was Georgia Power climbing telephone poles. <laughs> but anyway, uh, my mother, I give for her about 99% of the credit for uh, I think some of the genes, she was a worker. And my dad worked, you know, 40 hours every week, and I can't ever remember him not going to work. I was sick for any reason. Uh, so I came from a working family. So mm -hmm. As I thought back on myself, why, why I just liked to work. I'd worked, in, I guess, I'm 10, 11 years old. And it wasn't for the money. Uh, it was just I wanted to do things. And so that that's my, kind of my story. Uh, uh, I, I I like to please people uh, in business. Mm -hmm. So I worked in a grocery store for years. Uh, got a kick out of that, and. Uh, and then, of course, I started uh, Aaron. Mm -hmm. um, did, my mother you, and I. Mm -hmm. Did you come back to Atlanta because your mother was here? Because you, you went to university. Well, let me tell you that yeah. story quick, mm -hmm. quickly. <clears throat> I decided I wouldn't come back to Atlanta because at that time, uh, if the bankers didn't know your mother or father or uncle or aunt or something, uh, you couldn't get in the door. That was the way it was handled here, and that that eliminated uh, like all of the black community and 90% of the white community. <laughs> you had to have the, the background, so to speak, um, so uh, I decided when I went off to school, I went off to Chapel Hill on the GI Bill. I went to Georgia Tech um, a year, North Fulton High School here, and then Georgia, Georgia Tech, and then then the Navy, 
and then the GI Bill allowed me to go to out of the city. I was very upset about how everything was controlled within, say, two or three miles of right here where we're sitting, uh, from, from the bankers and and the chairman, presidents of the big companies, and uh, so I didn't see having a an opportunity here. Um, but then uh, Mills Lane came in town. I would give him most of the credit. Um, he came in town. His door was always open. He didn't know who you were. He's from Savannah. He didn't care who you were. Uh, you go in and present your deal to him, and he said yes or no. And that was it. It wasn't an appeal of that decision. And uh, but that changed banking in Atlanta hmm. to to a very large degree. Hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, I never did business with him, uh, but the, the atmosphere changed very much, and uh, I had. A very close friend who was went through high school together, went through, and then uh, joined the Navy together. We were roommates up at Chapel Hill together, and he felt the same way. We had a lot of talk over the years of how the uh, uh, we we felt this discrimination because we we saw friends that we had. Uh, going forward with, with that opportunity wasn't for us, mm -hmm. uh, we didn't think. But after, after going away uh, for you know, about four years in Carolina, then I went to work for uh, <clears throat> the Pfizer laboratory and uh, calling on uh, doctors and hospitals and clinics and so forth. and. I had great success with that, and I was promoted uh, quickly up. So I started off in Greensboro, North Carolina, and went to Richmond, Virginia, as a regional manager. And uh, that's the story of how. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, I, I'd seen uh, a rental business when I was in Greensboro. Back then, you lived with people. Um, widows, uh, boarding houses mm -hmm. type thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, this lady, Lou Hurst's uh, <coughs> son-in-law, had a little rental company. It still existed, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, I call, call it OMB Rentals. But I always had that in my mind. And after, mm -hmm. after, well, my mother had a, um, Good a tea room, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, she was offered all this. Is, I think is in the book that you mm -hmm. read, but anyway, uh, okay. she was offered a big restaurant. Uh, it was in the Pershing Hotel, and she said she wouldn't uh, come. She wouldn't run unless I'd come back and work with her. We were very close. Mm -hmm. My brother was much closer to. Uh, to uh, to my father, but um, I came back and we we did very well. And I took all the cash I could get and started the rental business. So, uh, well, <clears throat> quick story on that. I I told uh, told the guy that sold his pots and pans uh, <clears throat> about it, and he said. Well, I'll be your partner. So he had five hundred dollars, and I borrowed five hundred, and bought chairs, um, and put them under a tent for an auction, and uh, rented them ten cents a day, three hundred chairs. And after a hot summer that we delivered, our first order was three hundred. Uh, <laughs> when we load the back on the truck and a lot of sweat, <laughs> he decided he wanted to be in the rental business and uh, 
so I had to buy him out. Yeah, he, I know he regretted that later. <laughs> well, he went around town years and years saying he used to own half of their address. <laughs> well, I couldn't deny it. And it's true. It's true. He about a week. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that worked out very well. But my point there is, um, I decided that. Ms. Lane had opened that up. I, the uh, mother had customers coming in from this this area, the, um, and I could see that uh, the atmosphere had changed. It was no longer a little small town. The, the town was really growing back then. So uh, I. Uh, well, uh, Atlanta was a it was a good atmosphere from from my business. I had first store was a little store on Peachtree Road next to uh, it was called Fred's Fruit Emporium, and uh, uh, Fred was an older white guy, and uh, I was renting uh, punch bowls and candelabras and. China and silver and all that kind of stuff, and he kept saying, "That won't have it. Everybody here has it. Everybody out here in Buckhead is is, uh, is rich. They got all that. They're not going to rent any stuff." Well, I used to most of my business it was with caterers, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, and I'd rent to the caterers, and mm -hmm. so it worked out well. And uh, then I. Uh, or red tents, and then, then hospital equipment. We mm -hmm. we could set up hospital rooms. We had uh, um, we I think it was about 200 wheelchairs and 200 hospital beds. And we could set up a hospital room in your house, mm -hmm. and even had uh, <clears throat> we we would put up traction in the house, and we uh, put uh, oxygen. Uh, with the doctor's direction, of mm -hmm. course. Mm -hmm. But then I heard heard about furniture rental, mm -hmm. and I went up in Winston Salem, North Carolina, and looked at it pretty well, and I ordered ten apartments full of furniture, and uh, started started renting twenty five dollars twenty five dollars for three rooms of furniture per <laughs> twenty five dollars per month. Mm -hmm. And that worked well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we kept growing and growing, and finally I sold the party equipment business, and I sold <coughs> uh, the sick room business uh, and the tents. I rent tents, big time mm -hmm. tents. And that's when I rented the tents for the march mm -hmm. from uh, Selma to Montgomery. Mm -hmm. um, well, we've just grown from the, there. Uh, now we have 1,900 stores, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll do combined. We'll do a third of our companies. A third of our stores are a franchise, mm -hmm. and uh, two thirds are company owned. Mm -hmm. If you take look at the volume of both. Franchising the company, mm -hmm. it's a little over three billion wow. billion uh, dollars. I remember you saying once about how you your sort of philosophy of treating people in such a way that you become a bill they don't mind paying. You know, it's like that they pay your bill on time. I mean, how did you how did you come to that, or what is that? Well, you know, in the rental business. You know, we you come to our shop and you rent a big screen television, you pay one month. Mm -hmm. You don't pay a security deposit, you don't pay delivery, uh, and you can send it back at any time you want to. If you come back, you pay the second month, uh, what we say is you renewed the contract. Um, and if you pay, each item has a different, not, uh, each category of item has a different 
time. Mm -hmm. uh, some things like computers, it's a 12 months and it's yours. Mm -hmm. On the large screen television, because it's very expensive, um, it's 24 months. But the uh, rental rate is a little over $100 a month. That's about the number of dollars that, that our <clears throat> customers, we're dealing with with customers that, to the large part, have lost their credit, mm -hmm. uh, have no job, or they're on, on a government uh, program or something. They, they can't go in and, and pay $2,000 mm -hmm. mm -hmm. right. for a big screen television. Right. Um, but the fact is, we've got to please them or they send it back. Mm -hmm. And that's same with furniture, and mm -hmm. somebody gives them a whole house full of furniture, or they move to the mother's house or mm -hmm. something. Uh, a lot of reasons why they can send it back. Mm -hmm. So here again, we've got to please them. It's mm -hmm. a matter of, I like to please the customer. Mm -hmm. uh, please. It's just something about, you know, I've been in the service business since I was about 11 years old. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so I guess that's the reason we, we've been so successful. We've uh, started out for a lot, a lot of rental companies and it ended up to about two mm -hmm. on a short-term rental mm -hmm. um, called Rent to Rent. Um, and I've tried to figure out, you know, why we've been so successful and so many of the others have not. And it really is that we really preach service. Mm -hmm. And we have a philosophy of, um, <clears throat> of trying to, first thing, take when we price an item to what, what, what we're going to charge per month. Number one, we, we look and say, well, no, we want, our, our profit is about 10%. Mm -hmm. We'll price it where we get 10% plus all expenses and everything and mm -hmm. pay for the item. Um, and if we buy the item ch cheaper, we'll rent cheaper. And that's mm -hmm. exactly what Walt, St. Walton did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, back then, when Sam started, uh, uh, example maybe if he was selling socks for a dollar a pair mm -hmm. and he got a, a break from the manufacturer, he'd cut it to 90 cents a pair. Mm -hmm. A normal retailer would say, no, I'm going to put that 10 percent in my back pocket. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we 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 do the same thing. If we can get the uh, if we can get our ten 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 percent, mm -hmm. we've got to, uh, we wouldn't be in business if we cut it below that. Right. <laughs> so, uh, but, uh, but it makes I've sense. had so many rental companies say to me, uh, "Why don't you raise the price? Why don't you raise the price?" A lot of them been mad at me because I wouldn't raise their price. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it's uh, it, the whole philosophy. It's a program, and we we've put a lot of people out of business because um, they didn't see see the same philosophy we have. Mm -hmm. And frankly, we've had to talk to a lot of franchisees that we and stop them from raising their price because we're like 30% lower than our competitors right now in mm -hmm. price. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to raise the price mm -hmm. until, if, until it gets to the point. Mm -hmm. We're not making the 10%, right? Mm -hmm. We make a little less. We're right at nine and a half mm -hmm. each, each year. Everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody thinks, well, you know, you get rich. Well, our, our margins are lower mm -hmm. than most retailers in the world, mm -hmm. but very few of them 
of the rental business are the same size we are. Right. We have grown so fast because of price. Yeah. And product. Is, you know. and, and loyalty, because if you give people a product that they can, at a price they can afford it, you know, and the to ability to, uh, that we, we have no credit checks. Mm -hmm. That's a very important part because we get a lot of people mm -hmm. who, and we'll tell them, if, you can, if your credit allows you or you have the cash mm -hmm. to pay cash, we have a cash price. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we guarantee that, that we'll meet anybody's cash price. Mm -hmm. um, and I love to sell the cash. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're in the rental business, but if I can sell to somebody for cash <laughs> and have a 20 or 30% margin, mm -hmm. that's money in the back pocket. You know, that's an additional business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because we got the product, mm -hmm. and, and we're allowed to do that because we are now the size where we can get some very good bargains. Mm -hmm. the, the manufacturers will take care of us because we buy so huge quantities, mm -hmm. huge quantities. Mm -hmm. So as you were building the business, what was happening with Atlanta? Do you, do you remember Hartsfield? Were you just were you paying attention when he was well, there? Well, uh, yeah, I was paying attention. Bill Hartsfield. We uh, most of the white people thought he was too liberal. Mm -hmm. He. Uh, and he, he, I, yeah, I, I'd met him, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, but Bill Hartsfield did two or three great things. Um, when I was growing up, Birmingham and Atlanta were sister cities. Mm -hmm. um, and they used to have a radio program, way for television and everything, and it was a. Uh, Atlanta versus Birmingham, Atlanta mm -hmm. versus Birmingham. They would have a quiz show and so forth. And, mm -hmm. and uh, but Birmingham very, had very poor leadership. Mm -hmm. um, it was controlled by uh, uh, steel mills. Mm -hmm. and, um, and Ford Motor came in. And, and uh, we were paying, Ford was paying a dollar an hour. Mm -hmm. And the steel mills was not too happy about that. So they kept Ford out of Birmingham. Wow. And Bill Hartsfield had hmm. come on over. And they, mm -hmm. I think the f first mm -hmm. Ford was out on Ponce de Leon, the old building. But uh, <coughs> he, uh, he was very, very progressive. Uh, another thing he would do, he he decided that Atlanta would never be a, a first-class city if it didn't serve mixed drinks. Mm -hmm. So uh, he, he was a preacher out on Ponce de Leon. He was very much against any alcohol. and. Uh, he would get the police out and arrest the, uh, <coughs> the bartenders that were selling mixed drinks on Saturday night. Hartsfield ruled that a mixed drink was the same alcohol content as wine. Mm -hmm. And he had this the city council to agree to that. And, but he would have people out and, and, and go to the bars, the police, and they had a meter that you put in the <laughs> mixed drink. If it was more than wine, he'd, he'd arrest the bartender. And Artsville on Sunday morning would go up and get the bartenders out of jail. <laughs> and start all over again. He was determined, determined that he was going to, he was talking about first-class restaurants. Right. You don't have really first-class restaurants until, unless you have mixed drinks. Right. And so uh, he finally won that battle. <laughs> Maybe that preacher died, I've forgotten, but he was well, mm -hmm. well known. I can't think of his name. Mm -hmm. 
But anyway, that was one of the makings of Atlanta, mm -hmm. of Bill Hartsfield. But you said the um, you said the three things he did was he brought the Ford plant over. He did the liquor by the drink, the uh, mixed drinks, and what? And that you were going to say a third thing. Um, called the Improve, Improve of 1952, I think mm -hmm. it was. He, uh, he expanded uh, the city of Atlanta limits. City of Atlanta limits stopped up at Collier Road, mm -hmm. you know, where Collier is, mm -hmm. and on Howell Mill Road is all that, the waterworks mm -hmm. that was in the city mm -hmm. and around. Mm -hmm. And the, the reason for that plant, what they call it, Pratt and Flew, but in the it was a racial thing. Mm -hmm. um, they, Hartsfield and the rest thought that Atlanta was sitting limits was going to be black mm -hmm. soon. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to, you know, bring in the white people. Mm -hmm. uh, seen the math, but it was, it was about triple the, uh, the population of so-called Atlanta. Well, I always say every time the um, city council can pass a budget, they need to drink a toast to Hartsfield because without Bucket, they wouldn't have the yeah. tax base for it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Atlanta's yeah. very fortunate to you know that it could the downtown could expand and still be in the city. Yeah, and, and it was it was tough. My my uncle was here. I had a dry cleaning plant. He was very much against mm -hmm. uh, the Hartsfield bringing mm -hmm. the city limits out there. Mm -hmm. Who's a little north of here? Mm -hmm. uh, but most anything that has gone through it through uh, Atlanta has uh, goes through the white community and the black community, uh, and, and that's, that's one of the great things that's made Atlanta is uh, you don't uh, every issue. Is uh, has to go through the black community. It used to, uh, the, the preachers made decisions. They had, uh, they would put out a voting card to everybody mm -hmm. to know how to vote. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and they would meet down at the Cap City Club with the, with the black preachers and the Hartsfield and that group. Um, and they would say now to the preachers, uh, "What do we need to get on to get on your ballot?" Mm -hmm. What they call that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've some, got it somewhere. Yeah, yeah. we know. And, uh, and that worked. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the preachers would Atlanta say, voters, you know, voters lead or something? "They would." Uh, they'd say, "Well, we need a playground over here in this school, and we need this road mm -hmm. paved, and this, mm -hmm. that, and the other." And that's the way politics worked back then. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, now it seems to be controlled by elected officials mm -hmm. of power. Uh, if you want to get elected, you talk to the elected officials, which has been the mayor and mm -hmm. so on. But, you know, I have said that um, one of the great things about Atlanta now if you really look at it, I'm a bottom line guy. Mm -hmm. um, the white community controls most of the money, mm -hmm. and the black community controls 90% of the votes. So we have to work together to make anything happen. And that's good. Mm -hmm. Neither one is, can, uh, can no. dominate. Mm -hmm. And what, I mean, the willingness, I mean, because you started off talking about the difference in the leadership in Atlanta, the willingness of people to work together. I mean, what is that? Well, how did that come about? Mm -hmm. First thing, from my 84 year old <laughs> perspective, back in those days, race was in the closet. Mm -hmm. 
and the white community did not know the black community. Mm -hmm. The only and, and in in Buckhead, for example, you knew the maid or the yard man, mm -hmm. and you loved them. Mm -hmm. But everybody, all the other blacks were bad. Mm -hmm. That was just the way uh, you heard. Mm -hmm. I mean, that came out of North Georgia and all over. My dad was the biggest racist in America. Uh, but, but, but he loved the maid that we had for so many years and the yard man. Mm -hmm. and, but he, he didn't see them as black. He saw them as human beings. And that's, that's what's happened to us. Now in Atlanta, I think we are probably the most integrated city in America because we know and love blacks like we love whites, and uh, and I think that's the thing we've passed is uh, that uh, others have not. Mm -hmm. um, and I can tell you a lot of stories about some of the. Some of my elected officials, like the mayors and so forth, uh, that has prompted this. Uh, you know, uh, Ivan Allen saw it. He he was the blue-blooded buckhead, mm -hmm. but he saw it differently than 99 percent of the other buckhead people, mm -hmm. and he was not too. Uh, uh, who well thought of, uh, and, and his friend. They loved him, mm -hmm. but he was way too liberal. For, mm -hmm. for the of, but he pushed it through. Mm -hmm. and he he went to Washington and signed the, the was that the bill? And, yeah, it was testify well, in support of the Civil Rights Act. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was not a very popular thing to do with. But he, he, we've had those kind of leaders, mm -hmm. and we've had, you know, uh, Maynard Jackson. He he did a lot of great things, but he did them wrong. Mm -hmm. he, he did them poorly. He split the city, black white, and uh, it was <clears throat> very. Uh, and he he was, you know, he was very openly about it. He wouldn't. We had uh, the mayor come to the Atlanta Rotary Club, which was the power in the city. And, you know, had all our bankers mm -hmm. and there were mm -hmm. three, four hundred, mm -hmm. uh, primarily white, I, well, 99 percent white. Mm -hmm. And every mayor would come in January, February, and talk about the state of the city. Mm -hmm. Mayor wouldn't do it. Eight years, he wouldn't do it. Uh, and that was that, that didn't help him. It didn't help the city. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, Andy came in right behind, and and uh, everybody eventually loved Andy. And and you know, I and, and right now, our mayor is reaching out to both communities. Mm -hmm. Right now, mm -hmm. uh, and I. I hope uh, all communities like Kashim, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. because he's reaching out to both. Yeah. And, yeah. and to the Georgia legislature, too. Oh, yeah. Well, Andy did a lot of that. Mm -hmm. Andy would uh, walk across the street from City Hall mm -hmm. and talk to uh, who was the speaker. Yeah. yeah, he and the speaker were good buddies. <laughs> Tom Murphy. Tom Murphy. Tom Murphy. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, you know I got to know Tom like Tom quite a bit when I was with Marta. Mm -hmm. uh, so what Tom. what did you see? Is that did you see that in him when you decided to support him? I mean, did you, you see my name? dad? Did you see him as a as someone who would you know bring communities together? <laughs> he he came here to talk to me about uh, running for mayor. Mm -hmm. And he said, if you and Jesse and Herman want me to run, I'll run. Mm -hmm. And, uh, <clears throat> well, I walked him to the elevator and didn't make a commitment. I said, 
I'm going to support the person who can put this city back together. Mm -hmm. I don't know who that's going to be, mm -hmm. but we're not going to build a great city here split like it is today. Mm -hmm. And I'll emphasize again, Maynard did a lot of good things. There wasn't any question about that mm -hmm. for, the, for the betterment of the city. But you don't, you don't do that with, without everybody following you. Mm -hmm. in the white community. Mm -hmm. And Andy only got 10% of the white vote mm -hmm. because of, they felt it was, Andy was another Maynard, mm -hmm. and that was very mm -hmm. bad, and I can tell you a lot of stories about that. But um, anyway, um, we've had, uh, you know, Shirley gave it her best. In my opinion, she made some mistakes, but mm -hmm. I, I like her. And I, I mean, mm -hmm. She gave her best, and she told me, she said, mm -hmm. Charlie, I'll give him my best shot mm -hmm. right when she was leaving. Yeah. So well, you, you've done a hell of a good job. And she was a transition mm -hmm. type person, I guess. And, mm -hmm. um, but you're real pleased with Cassine. You feel really good about Cassine. I do. Yeah. I do, and I've told him that. Yeah. I told him that a few times. Uh, yeah. He hadn't done anything or said anything that I felt was not in the best interest of the city mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that I didn't agree with, mm -hmm. which I'm not the mm -hmm. only person to agree, but I look at it, or how, how are we doing with the city, mm -hmm. how's a mayor serving the city? Mm -hmm. And Andy had a, had a tough job uh, uh, trying to live down arrogance of Maynard. Mm -hmm. You know, they came out, well, Maynard, uh, uh, was it Jesse Herman? Herman brought Maynard out to my office when I had a little store out here and wanted to me to support mm -hmm. Maynard. I didn't know Maynard. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I ended up, Herman asked me, you know, Herman will ask you for $10,000. You know, $10,000 well, $10, was a lot of money back then. There was only one other person that gave him 10 But the next time I saw Maynard, he wouldn't even speak to me. And he didn't, he didn't want anything to do with me. And he goes, my thought was I was white. Uh, he was against the whites, and that isn't the way you govern the city. So but how anyway. did you get to know Herman? Um, <clears throat> we we we, we uh, built built the Omni mm -hmm. and owned the Hawk and the Flames, and uh, Herman. I asked Herman to be one of our partners. Mm -hmm. I think there were eight partners. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize you had been one of the partners in the hall. Oh yeah, half mm -hmm. million dollars. Mm -hmm. We, mm -hmm. we, mm -hmm. Tom put the cousin put in a million, and we put in a half each. Mm -hmm. um, and Herman put it in, mm -hmm. and. Um, our industry, uh, the rental business, was being what we thought was discriminated against <laughs> with investment tax credit. Mm -hmm. uh, Congress took away investment tax credit from us because some IRS agent read the law and it says if you're in the housing market, you're not eligible for investment tax credit. And that was for the hotel, motel business because of the lodging business, because they had a lot of other tax benefits mm -hmm. that we in the rental business didn't have. But we were in furniture, so this guy, they ruled that uh, since we were in furniture, then we were in the have a lodging business or whatever and took away investment tax credit. 
um, you know, uh, your dad was in the legislature at the time, and uh, Herman says, uh, let me take you over to see our representative, Andrew Young, talk to him about this. I said, great. So we went over there, and he was uh, maybe where he is there, Fair Street or something. Herman? Your dad. Mm -hmm. Your dad. You are Herman. Herman was on Fair Street. Yeah, Herman's and, on Fair and your dad came over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the thing that impressed me, he, he, your dad says, well, we liberal congressmen are against investment tax credits. <laughs> but from what I'm hearing, if anybody's getting it, you should get it. Mm -hmm. Your industry should get it. So with that, I said, that's my kind of guy. <laughs> you know, 99% of the politicians would beat around the bush and round and round and, and lie and everything else. Mm -hmm. But that's how I first, first met him. And, and frankly, um, uh, he I saw him once or twice after that with Herman. And, uh, he said, why, how, why haven't you helped me? Why haven't you asked me to help you? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, the lawyers are big bouncing around this side and the other. And I said, I'll call on you. Well, he left before the issue came up. Mm -hmm. But uh, Fowler mm -hmm. Watch. Uh -huh. uh, mm -hmm. took his place. Mm -hmm. And Weish worked on it and got it, got it changed. And, mm -hmm. And I was a hero with all the rental guys. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, got, the, got the law change. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, that's where I, when I first met your mm -hmm. father. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I don't think we had any deals until he you know, run with the, came up here to mm -hmm. run for mayor. So w did you meet Herman when he became a member of the chamber, or how did you all get to know each other? When we, we brought him on the, on the, on the ownership house, on of the, the ownership. auction. Uh -huh. So did he, did he help build the army with Tom Well, Curry? did. It was yeah. uh, Zeta. Mm -hmm. Zeta. So what, why did y'all want to bring, because that's actually one of the questions. Is, I mean, what was, so what was the thing about why it was good to bring these sports teams to Atlanta? I mean, why was that something you wanted to be on? Well, I'll tell you. Have to go back. I was on the grand jury mm -hmm. years ago, and we had Furman Bisher mm -hmm. to come in. Mm -hmm. He was a writer, mm -hmm. if you remember? Mm -hmm. And he kept ta he was ta talking to us. Now, Atlanta, the word Atlanta, will be on every newspaper in the country mm -hmm. if we get uh, baseball or football or basketball. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That will build the city, mm -hmm. Atlanta, mm -hmm. Atlanta, and mm -hmm. and, uh, and that impressed mm -hmm. the hell out of me mm -hmm. that this little old jerkwater town, mm -hmm. like, you know, kind of like Macon is now, <laughs> <laughs> is going to be in in every newspaper in the country, Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's the reason that some of us. Mm -hmm. Did that because mm -hmm. that's then the stadium was built. Mm -hmm. That's a whole mm -hmm. another state story. Mm -hmm. But uh, then um, Tom B Cousins wanted to develop what what was then the Gulch mm -hmm. back in there where, mm -hmm. where the Omni was built. Mm -hmm. That was uh, believe it or not, that's where all the garbage was burned. Mm -hmm. You didn't bury it; you burned it. Mm -hmm. And you, you took the hot water, and it was uh, piped around the city, and into the buildings for heat. <laughs> that's how, that's how you heated buildings. Mm -hmm. It was the, uh, the city, mm -hmm. hot water, and then, and you could smell that garbage burning in mm -hmm. the city. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> we got beyond that, and Tom wanted to, he had bought that gulch, mm -hmm. and he wanted to develop it. Mm -hmm. 
and he uh, he built the Omni Hotel there, and then he wanted, as I said, he put a million dollars in it, we put a half million each, and we bought a franchise. Um, Hawks, and, and then the Hawks were, uh, I think, in St. Louis. We, he brought them down here. Mm -hmm. And they played their first year at Tech, right? Played you know, at the, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. We got in trouble with that. <laughs> we we played uh, Julius Irving mm -hmm. illegally. <laughs> oh, because he was uh, he still was, licensed well, he to was the signed, NBA. Yeah, he was. Well, he signed some other team. I think mm -hmm. Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I was part of in that part of that uh, negotiation and. And of course, everything was different back then. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, we, we uh, well, uh, anyway, we, we negotiated with him, I never will forget. And, uh, and his agent was a little short Jewish fellow that was pounding on us for more money, more money. And, uh, and, and, and Irving said, look, I, forget all that. I just want to play basketball. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get into all that. Of course, the AJ kept saying, what are we going to get? But um, anyway, he played one or two games. Mm -hmm. And then the NBA uh, slapped our hands and uh, fined us a few dollars. And it happened. Uh, another quick story. Mm -hmm. uh, what was it? What was the white basketball player? Pete Maravich? Huh? Not Pete Maravich. Yeah, Maravich. Yeah. yeah. Maravich, uh, we, our deal with him was 300000 a year. Wow. <laughs> and we had to personally guarantee it. All of us, as seven or eight of us. Thank you. How about y'all? Oh, you, you, you got, we're good, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Um, uh, marriage was a bad guy. But yeah. he was the white hope, yeah. I thought. That was, yeah, everything yeah. was playing for the white community. You know, white vessel, you know. Here again, it's the black-white issue, but it worked That's well. That's all the season tickets. Mm-hmm. Well, he was, well, he used to say that Pete Maravich's, his famous formation was the I formation. Yeah, him, yeah. <laughs> Your I, I shoot, I dribble, I... <laughs> I shoot. That's right, that's right. Give it to me, I shoot. Uh, he's a bad guy. We tried to keep, we kept him out of the press. Back then, you you kept your players out of the press. Mm -hmm. It was very important. Mm -hmm. He got loaded and naked and ran up down the halls in Chicago and we had to keep him out of the press with that. Mm -hmm. You have today. No, you can't. Yeah. Somebody would have gotten them on their oh, iPhone yeah. and taken three pictures and sent it to he, uh, put it on YouTube. Cot Fitzsimmons was a coach mm -hmm. I remember. in the middle of the game and at, at halftime he came out screaming, I'll never. Play that guy again. No. <laughs> Play with him again. He wouldn't do anything Cotton said. He was going to shoot that, that ball. And had Bobby Sox, you remember that? He was ball down flop right there. Yeah. Uh, but he was, we had a, owners had a party. Um, and all the, the owners' wives, walked into John Wilcox's house and uh, all of them would, would stand up to shake hands with the ones except Maravich. Mm. He was just too good mm. to do that. You know, mm. That's the kind of guy he was. Mm. Mm. It's sad. It's, it's sad because he had a great ability. Mm. I had to get a, one of our baseball players out of a jail at East Point and keep it out of the press. You just didn't want mm -hmm. them. Uh, I think it was Eddie Matthews and I was a friend of Eddie's. I went out there. 
Tell we, you don't, we don't need this. I'd never have been in a bar fight if it weren't Freddie Matthews. Now I've been in many. So. <laughs> <laughs> we just be sitting there and Eddie starts swinging. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, those were the, those were the funny so, days. So putting the team together, there was that was like a conscious thing. It's trying to think about how do I put together a team that will get support from the whole community and get, get support from the white community? Well, we, we tried to make it black and white. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, but I tell you an interesting thing to me when I was on the grand jury and I talked about we had uh, two or three things about mm -hmm. that I remember uh, one is that we were trying to talk about getting the connector built mm -hmm. downtown mm -hmm. it stopped north of them. and for a year so we brought we brought the DOT guy in, mm -hmm. and we asked him, you know, when are you going to finish that? And he said, if I didn't have to go to meetings like this, I'd finish <laughs> a lot quicker. <laughs> <laughs> well, that put us where we thought we, had. we thought we were a big deal with the grand jury. You know, you call everybody. And it was funny. <laughs> um, Another thing that was uh, that was strange, it was the black leaders came to the grand jury and they said we want to give uh, the black criminals the same uh, penalty that you give the white. And that's kind of the reverse. But anyway, uh, their attitude was, well, they're killing each other, so who cares? That was, now that's a tough, tough deal. Mm -hmm. But they came in and, and said, look, um, you know, my brother gets killed, I want the same penalty for the killer that you would do that same in, mm -hmm. in the white community. And that, that was, that was very strange. Was More strange now than was well, then. Well, it's sort of the idea being that it was a reflection on how little value was placed on the lives no of black people. No question. No yeah. question. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, we've come a long way. Yeah. Your dad has talked about that quite a yeah. bit. We've come a long yeah. way. Yeah. Uh, first thing, Racism has come out of the closet. It was you wouldn't talk about it back in those days. Mm -hmm. It was just let it alone, let it alone. Don't don't rock the boat. Don't say anything about it. Uh, um, so uh, I think we can all pat ourselves on the back and say, you know, we we've made this happen in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. I think Atlanta now is probably the most integrated city in the country. Atlanta, the, the African American community, uh, community are, are in all the clubs. Mm -hmm. In a lot of cities, mm -hmm. they're not in any, any of them. Well, the interesting clubs. thing is, like you said, with the with the Hawks, but also with the you go in the suites at the Falcons game. That's I think that's the thing where you really. Because, you know, the, I didn't the, know the football suites are so diverse. You know, you walk around that loop where now? the suites are. Yeah, that is yeah. money. Yeah, yeah. Not black right. white. I know money. it's just money, but in yeah. in other communities, you you know, the black community doesn't have that kind of access. Well, you saying yeah. there are a number of suites where, yeah. where we have African Yeah, America. I mean, sure. when you go, of course. You know, <coughs> it, it's it's come to money. Yeah. Follow the dollar, uh, and what we need to do now. When you know, we started. A, well, they started the, the action for it. Right. Yeah, we wanted to ask yeah, you about that. Yeah, we wanted that. to talk about that. Yeah, it, it, um, there were six or eight leaders that started that. Now, frankly, uh, when you really look at 
what it, what, why it was started and what it accomplished, it was it started to bring the, the uh, black community into the business world, into everything that's happening in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, 15 black and 15 white. Well, uh, I wasn't important enough to, well, there was more. Uh, I was not asked to be, to be in the action forum because I had supported Andy. Mm -hmm. All the whites in that group supported Marcus. Mm -hmm. And of course the blacks supported Andy. Well, I, I was only only business guy that supported Andy. So when it, after the election, he went, uh, I was talking about you know, the action forum, and, and the whites said, we don't want Lila Hook in here. And so the black community said, well, we do. <laughs> so, so I went in as a black. So, <laughs> and I was very proud to go in, you know, because uh, we were doing some great things, and uh, Underground was, was one of them, and getting a dome built, all of us in these stories. But then, anyway, um, and the real value, in my opinion, of action for them was the white leaders, including me, got to know the black leaders, personal, mm -hmm. a personal, per the family, mm -hmm. the wives, the family, the mm -hmm. whole thing. Mm -hmm. And that was the value, in my opinion, mm -hmm. uh, of the Bob Stricklands and, and that group that was anti, anti-blacks. Uh, some other things came out of that, of course, uh, but it changed opinion of a lot of the so-called leaders. Mm -hmm. and they went back and changed opinion of a lot of people in their organization, uh, you know, which were the big companies. They were mm -hmm. running. But I, you know, John John Cox. Did mm -hmm. you ever know John I Cox? I did. Great guy. Yeah. He was. Uh, he said to me, he says, you know, it's not one job in Atlanta, Georgia, that a black can get that'll pay thirty thousand dollars. Thirty thousand dollars. And uh, he said we've got to. I get control of the schools and uh, what else? Uh, well, the politics. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And what was that that he? Do you remember? Gosh, he was, you know he'd been dead right. twenty years. I right. guess. Uh, Who's Merrill? Who who was mayor? Do you think at that mayor? time? I well, it's Maynard. I, I wasn't any earlier than Maynard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that, that opened my eyes, mm -hmm. and, and and I told a lot of people the same thing. Mm -hmm. You you really didn't realize that. We didn't realize that. That it wasn't a job in Atlanta that uh, uh, African American get for more than for the thirty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. That today it would be about fifty or sixty. But anyway. Um, that opened a lot of our eyes at the discrimination and uh, uh, how that worked. But anyway, here again, that's history. Here again, we're we crossed a lot of bridges yeah. on that. Yeah, I look at how my you know my brother got the money making gene in the family, so you know he's, uh, <laughs> it's like a whole different. You know, his generation, they have, you know, they just, their, their access and the way that they can think about what's possible is just, you know, they, yeah. it's just unlimited. They don't, yeah. you know, he does business with, you know, and he, in his, his, he does envelope, I know. Broker, you know, it's a business to business thing. And, 
Yeah, I hope we I hope we buy home on front. He came out here. I don't even know. I mean, uh, I should ask. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyway. Yeah, he's, uh, what happened to the action form? <clears throat> well, Bill Campbell came in. He was doing things that a lot of us didn't like. And we would ask at meetings, we'd ask, now who could talk to Bill Campbell? And we expected some of the black members would say, I'll, I'll talk to him tomorrow. I'll call him this afternoon. I'll go see him. Like, no way. No way. Just, he didn't want to talk to anybody in that group. And it just, with, with that just fell apart. Because she, you know, the action forum, there was no publicity. Mm -hmm. You could not talk about anything that was talked about in the action forum. Mm -hmm. But we could always, one or two could always go and talk to, of course, Andy and anybody else, and Shirley. Well, Shirley wasn't in the picture at that time. Uh, but. Uh, it just fell apart at that point. It was, I was co-chairman when it just kind of fell apart, I'm sorry to say. Uh, Greg Branco was the other co-chairman. You always had a white and a black mm -hmm. as, as co-chairman. Mm -hmm. Well, I never knew that Greg was on the uh, action forum. We were the, we were the <laughs> co-chairman. We, we just stopped meeting. Mm -hmm. Who would, uh, who were some of them that were on the action forum, just from some of the names? Good gosh. Um, we, all your bankers, um, see, I don't, we had, we had a rule, I think it was no politicians. Mm -hmm. Andy was not, Maynard was not, mm -hmm. uh, the mayors were not, um, was Jesse and Herman, Jesse. Uh, mm -hmm. and rightfully so, they they had a big stick in that. Mm -hmm. But you could you could write you could name them, you know. Mm -hmm. You so, you know them, all of them, but I can't remember. Yeah, sure. <laughs> was it also impacted by the um, you know the, you started to get the change where you didn't have um, like the banks weren't locally owned anymore? And <coughs> Well, that was a good part of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a good part of it. Uh, you used to could talk to three or four people in the city, and, and that would be it. They, and actually, the the what was said for membership in the action forum, we would not accept anybody except the chairman or the president. You could you could make a commitment sitting around that table and it would happen. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to call Charlotte or New York or mm -hmm. anything else. Uh, you could speak for it, mm -hmm. and that was uh, mm -hmm. that was very important because we lost all of that. Uh, lost that because of the, we 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 lost that. Banks, they were yeah, North sure. Carolina. Right. Well, you told me an interesting, you know, the reasoning for that, which I wasn't, aware, you know, of Georgia not having branch banking. Exactly. It was they were protecting the small bankers in these in these small towns because the legislature was dominated by the small town uh, senators and. and the, <clears throat> that was, um, and North Carolina didn't have that restriction. Mm -hmm. We tried to get around that restriction by taking 10% of the, the banks would make by 10% of the bank, these yeah. little banks and around, but I just really didn't sense. do it. Either. It didn't do it. And, um, um, and we had some strong leadership up there. Uh, was the guy's name? Yeah, Hugh McCall. Mm -hmm. uh, 
he, he was he was ex marine. Yeah, he was, <laughs> you he know, was a power. He, yeah, he was a power. Power. It was in uh, mm -hmm. college together. Really? Oh, really? Carolina. He went to Carolina. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so, what would you say were the sort of two or three things the Action Forum accomplished when you were? Uh, well. He played a role in Marta, uh -huh. for example. Um, played a big role in uh, Underground Atlanta. Uh -huh. well, <laughs> very few things that happened. I can't remember anything that, happened, that the action form was against. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But it was just, uh -huh. you know, it's unwritten. Mm -hmm. It was unwritten. You just, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. but it was so. We would say, uh, "All right, White John, what do you think?" At Portman, mm -hmm. Black John, what do you what do you think? And it'd be John uh, Cox. Cox. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had that relationship: White, Black, mm -hmm. your friends. We're all friends. We're all in here together. And this, that, mm -hmm. and the other thing. Uh, um, so we got a lot of things done, kind of under the under the cover, of, uh, mm -hmm. uh, because we agreed on it, and we we knew it wasn't going to be in the press. Mm -hmm. And people pretty much people were faithful to that of not speaking to the press. Oh yeah, no question about that. I don't know. Uh, we probably had a vote to get them out if they were, <laughs> gonna, if they were there for the publicity of it. That's. Uh, but it, first it met on, on uh, Saturdays, mm -hmm. Saturday morning. Where did it meet? And then it moved to the Commerce Club on, uh, what was it? Monday morning, Wednesday morning, I forgot mm -hmm. which. But it, it always ended at 9 o'clock where you could go to work. Mm -hmm. Start at 7, we go to 9. Mm -hmm. Where? Commerce Club. Where? Commerce Club, Second. that's what you said. Top floor of the Commerce Club. Um, Mills B. Lane. Bill mm -hmm. Well, that was a much more cohesive place back then, I guess. Right now, you was trying to add one that, I don't know how you address the Johns Creeks and the, all these disparate areas that claim to be part of Atlanta, then don't claim to be part of Atlanta at the same time. Well, that was not part of anything. I mean, mm -hmm. you, you wasn't splintering off. Yeah, Atlanta really was a, yeah, you know, had it yeah, together, but right now it's kind of splintered. It wasn't a debate between Fulton County and Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that, uh, they splintered off all the towns because, it, you know, being blunt, it was a black leadership. To, two or three of the black women were saying a lot of different stuff. And, one of them cost the city twenty million dollars. Uh, Fulton County Commission. Mm -hmm. What was her name? Uh, Emmy Darnell, I believe, or the who was the other? Oh, I think it was Emmy. Uh, Emma. Yeah. What happened when they're going to put the tunnel to to hold gar uh, the sewage? The sewerage. Mm -hmm. Spent $20 million for the research and engineering and everything to put it south. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, she went out there and told all of them that, that all that, all the germs coming out of the north side of Atlanta was going to be stored underneath their house. And you're going to be, uh, everybody's going to get sick. And you know, she, City Council stopped it and, and of course built it up here on the north side. But no germs <laughs> going out. It's hell so They're deep. pretty well down there. <laughs> <laughs> they already germed. But she, uh, $20 million. Mm -hmm. Tell you what, you know, mm -hmm. if you can do that, it's a, one of my, 
how one person can carry the, the thoughts of, of me. Mm. I mean, mm. you start with Hitler, mm. and then uh, when that Dr. Jones had carried three or four hundred people down in oh, yeah. Guana and wow. had them drinking it. One guy took the air controllers over the over the, over the bench, and all of them were out here cutting grass. And that, they, you remember Reagan says, uh, I've forgotten what the issue was, but if you strike, you're dead. Uh, you, you're fired. But they did. Mm -hmm. And this one guy, mm -hmm. and hell, and, and six months later, he he married some gal down in. South Seas, mm. living a great life, mm. a great life, mm. and all the people he carried over the over the cliff, uh, cutting grass or bagging groceries or mm. something, you know. Yeah. And one person. Can have that. Well, it seems like one of the things the Action Forum did is keep that cohesiveness together, where you didn't have the despair, at, you know, almost renegade. Right. All right. Um, right. It was uh, it was a great thing, and I I'm thinking thinking now that uh, I'm concerned that we're not we don't have the leadership mm -hmm. in Atlanta like we had, mm -hmm. and talking bluntly here, the white, young white men and women have been kept out of the politics of Atlanta uh, for a lot of years. Mm -hmm. now, Andy tried to change that. Mm -hmm. Andy got, I've forgotten how many young white kids and, mm -hmm. and young black get to know each other and to work together. Mm -hmm. And it didn't have leadership. It didn't have one person that says, "Okay, let's let's meet and mm -hmm. and, and let's mm -hmm. let's go somewhere to a concert, you know, mm -hmm. you know to build that." Uh, you know. mm -hmm. And uh, and I, I see it bluntly in that in the business world, you take your assets. Mm -hmm. And you use them to the mm -hmm. best of everybody. Well, the assets of these kids out there that have had good education and have money have, and love Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Love Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Just do anything for Atlanta. But they, you know, my, my godchild is a kid, not a kid anymore, but anyway. Clay Rolletta. Mm -hmm. he, he was a Rhodes Scholar. He wanted to get in Atlanta politics. And he was kind of chairman of uh, the ZRB. ZRB? Zoning Review oh, Board. Uh -huh. and, that, and it was so much stuff that he just dropped out and says, I can't take it. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think he saw that. It, that I, the door wasn't open. The door is opening much more now for mm -hmm. these people that I'm mm -hmm. describing as young young kids. Is that uh, because of Kasim or? Is it well, it was Andy. Yeah. And uh, and Shirley. Shirley. And yeah. now Kasim. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Kasim seems pretty embracing. What he likes. To yeah. Be. And I, from anything I hear, he. He's not irritating the black community, is he? We're talking, mm -hmm. we're taking politics and have votes, you know. Mm -hmm. The um, J I think Jason Carter is a um, bright, bright. Yeah. Um, Jason Carter, he's Jimmy's grandson. He's yeah. just see, seeing how he, you know, was really he was. It, we were doing a thing for Hands On Atlanta, so you know, very mm -hmm. all the all the corporate volunteers and everything mm -hmm. were there for a work day, and you know, he was just relating. To everybody, and he he's he's an impressive uh, white guy, white mm -hmm. black guy. Yeah, it's Jimmy Carter's grandson. Oh, oh, is that right? Yeah. 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 The um, you know, one of the things that's obviously good. changed in Atlanta is the 
the nature of the CEOs. I mean, I always mm -hmm. think, you know, there was a time when, you know, up through Roberto Guzzuato where you had Atlanta, you know, Roberto mm -hmm. viewed himself as an Atlanta and mm -hmm. viewed the community as important at Coke, mm -hmm. and then you have, mm -hmm. but now you have UPS, and then you have, uh, you know, who's, you know, these CEOs are from someplace else. I mean, right. Home and Depot, then, they... And they don't last long. They don't yeah. last long. That's the other thing. That's they don't the, have that's the big problem. They just, yeah. yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I've watched that with a couple of CEOs of notable companies in Atlanta where we were yeah. working with them where mm -hmm. the it's CEO, the bottom line yeah, it's the, the bottom was, line they say they love Atlanta yeah but well, uh, so they, the CEO is not a job anymore it's a reward they come in and it's like uh, you know they come in with great aspirations of what they're going to do then they mm -hmm. fight the wars a couple of years they're mm -hmm. making a zillion dollars and then mm -hmm. they think well mm -hmm. now I'm working on my transition mm -hmm. on my secession plan they just don't yeah, stay very long at all what the guy that Home Depot uh, Bob Nardelli. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Bob Nardelli. Yeah, Bardelli. No, no. Nar Nardelli. 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 Yeah. I knew him. Well, I think he might. I think he still lives there, doesn't he? Yeah, I think he has a big house out there. He went on to Chrysler and he bombed out there. He everywhere he went. <laughs> yeah. He was well, sort of, I always thought he compared it to, uh, it's like the, you know, if you're a coach, you know, they they look at these CEOs and say, well, if he's a CEO here, he can be a CEO there. It doesn't matter what the product <laughs> is. They say, well, he's a good basketball coach. I'm going to have him coach football. <laughs> yeah. That would consider the difference. Do you have yeah. a question, Teresa? Yeah, I was going to say, um, <clears throat> sorry, since this is um, going to be used in the archives and going to be listened to by different students and future leaders, um, what what is it, what are the characteristics that you think make a good Atlanta leader and a future Atlanta leader? Well, uh, we've identified some problems mm -hmm. that maybe need to be corrected here. Um, now, I don't know, it's no silver bullet as far as I'm concerned. And, and really, you you, you got to look at business and dollars. Without jobs, you die. Jobs is what it's all about. And I think you know some of the we're making some bad mistakes when you start paying some your class. School superintendent, two hundred seventy-five thousand dollars a year. You're messing up. I mean, to everybody else. Mm -hmm. they, say they don't trust the, the school system, the board, or whoever's doing that. They're make, they're working their butt off of seventy-five, and, and this woman making two hundred and seventy-five, and they're not going to say she's smarter than I am. But you, the, the wage scale is, and the government jobs has uh, gotten out of hand, as far as I can say. From, from a PR point of view, I don't think there's any question about that. That's, that's one thing. Um, and this, this, all this cheating and all this, you're driving all the kids to the private schools. And there's so many private schools now, they're jumping up anywhere. Uh, because they don't have the faith in the school system and this cheating thing and a lot of other stuff. Uh, the, the irony of that is that the, um, <coughs> the, the test, that the, there's a sample test that they can't cheat on that they also were improving on. So you almost didn't even know what they accomplished with, you know, with all of that, that it wasn't, it wasn't really, that they were, the cheating doesn't mean that they weren't improving in terms of their academics. And that, that's the, that's the thing that's really, really so strange sad. about it. So that's sad right. about doing all this is that all the good work that was happening is now gets obscured all, everything in the national news is all about, you know. About you. Well, but I got we got to get you right. over to Jean Charles Young Middle School. We got a new principal, and the building is beautiful, and they're doing some great things. We have to get you over there to see that. Yeah, it all to me it all goes yeah. to the teacher. Yeah, now, mm -hmm. you can get a great education in one room schoolhouse and a lousy 
quality education is the most magnificent bill in America. Mm -hmm. What's the difference? Mm -hmm. It's a teacher. It's a teacher. But we all remember the teachers answer. that, that we right. that were teachers. Right. Uh, they were not there just to have a job. Right. They had concern for you as a human being and the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so you got to look at at the t teachers now. Years ago, I um, Maynard Jackson put me on a future funding commission. Mm -hmm. The purpose of it was to sell a bond bond issue. Mm -hmm. But we brought in the different people mm -hmm. um, that that. Figured they needed money, mm -hmm. and put a, we we would put a number on how much money this this mm -hmm. the waterworks needed, mm -hmm. and how much mm -hmm. money streets needed. Mm -hmm. And this one guy that was on the school board says, "We don't need money." Mm -hmm. We said, "Wait a minute! <laughs> Everybody's coming here with money." He said, "We have property we don't even know we own." says, it's not money with us, it's tenure. Mm -hmm. We have, this is this is way for integration. Mm -hmm. so we have teachers that are lousy and doing bad things, but we can't get rid of them because of tenure. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's nothing we can do about that except try to change tenure. Mm -hmm. But thank God business doesn't have tenure, mm -hmm. you know. And I think that's one of the problems we have here. Well, it's tenure, and then uh, also there's no lateral movement. So you can't, you know, the people who work in schools have always worked in schools. They've never done anything else. You can't move in and out of, um, of it. So you can be like my sister. You know, she left IBM. She had an engineering degree. She worked for one of the top companies in America. But she wasn't qualified to teach in a high school. It's amazing. You know, um, and that's... Because she hadn't other, had the... Because she had not have a teaching certificate. Oh. You know, so you have somebody who... So she ends up volunteering, you know, with teenagers at church and things like that. And, so it's a you know, waste of talent. Waste of talent. Waste yeah. of talent. And, and also that mindset of having people who, who have different ideas about how you organize, how you do things, how you manage. To have that that um, diversity, because everything, you know, you need diversity of ideas. It was interesting, the other day, Beverly Tatum was talking about, you know, the mm -hmm. psychology of kids in mm -hmm. school, and mm -hmm. she said that the three things that count mm -hmm. are, you can do it, mm -hmm. kid. Uh, mm -hmm. no, first one is, it's worth your time, mm -hmm. you know, to be here. The mm -hmm. second one is, you can do it, and then mm -hmm. the third one's, I'm with you all the way. Mm -hmm. And said, unless the teacher can get those three things across, mm -hmm. so it's just a lost yeah, cause. She's a brilliant, she's, she's a great a, person. Ooh. But you know, you, you, you need to really study institutions like Westminster schools, mm -hmm. how they do it. Sure. Um, Are those kids they, nobody gets $275,000 a year. Right. But sure. Yeah. Anyway, um, you know, I've had, in my, when I was growing up, uh, we had teachers that wanted to teach. Oh, absolutely. Right. Right. And, uh, and you didn't disrupt the class because mm -hmm. the principal just told the janitor to go out and cut me a switch. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I dated a gal three and a half years as a teacher down in Tifton. She loved to teach. Yeah. You care about the kids. Don't and you? she, oh, she loved those kids. And um, she, uh, she was teaching the. the what do they call it, Division One mm -hmm. students, mm -hmm. or what do they call that? Title One. Yeah. Yeah. She the loved to teach case. the yeah. Title One. Yeah. It wasn't for the money, yeah. I think. she had money, but mm -hmm. uh, she had a great feeling mm -hmm. about, and they all loved her. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we were in South Georgia driving along, and this cop stopped us. She was driving. <laughs> She looked at it. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, he started talking to her. She had talked to this cop. Oh, yeah. The cop wasn't going to give her a ticket. No, he going to give her a ticket. <laughs> right. yeah. But they, they had a good feeling about oh, each sure. other. Right. Right. 
you know, that's that's the good thing about it. Uh, well, kids kids can read your mind. They know what oh, you no think question. about them. Oh, no question. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, it, and you know, the teachers in, in love at school, what, they don't make as much money as the ones in the Atlanta public schools. But as I understand it, in the Atlanta public schools, they got so damn much red tape and mm -hmm. garbage that they have to do. Yeah. <laughs> right down every time a kid goes to the bathroom or something, uh, you're not teaching when you're doing all that. Hell, yeah. you know, I think it's just gotten to to that point, and you can blame the lawyers and blame a lot of other things, but, you know, you, know, you got to think about it. who's doing the teaching. Have you uh, been through one of those KIPP schools? I think they're, what, five, four or five in Atlanta? Yeah, the, KIPP is a good... Yeah, good knowledge, good what is it, knowledge is power, something that they... Uh -huh. Those they go in the inner city and the kids are selected at random, yeah. and these kids are amazing. I mean, they just show, it's the same thing you're talking about. You go through there, Jack Ward and, yeah. and Rotary's really yeah. into it. He took me on that tour, and I'm thinking, this is incredible. And they I mean, love the school. They, they love, love school. it. They just they have a passion for it, and they have, like, cheerleader-type yeah. chants to learn. Yeah. They, I mean, it's really very yeah. motivating. So with Teresa's question, if you, I mean, for, for you know, young leaders today, though, and, and um, you know, what would you, what would, I mean, what would you say kind of makes, has made Atlanta the kind of place that could, grow the way that it did and, and create the... Well, I'll give you an mm -hmm. example of a mm -hmm. business community and, and your father. Mm -hmm. uh, he called me one time and said, uh, you know we buy at IBM. Mm -hmm. He said, uh, IBM's going to build a, ma a major building and uh, I want to keep it in the city. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like they want to build it out on Marietta Highway. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I said, well, uh, yeah, the vice chairman and I were classmates at North Carolina, mm -hmm. Paul Rizzo. Mm -hmm. Pretty good class. <laughs> and I said, uh, he said, would you ask him if he'd come down here and meet with me? I called Paul. He said, sure. I'd like to meet with Andy. Didn't tell him what it was about, mm -hmm. of course. Uh, and I went out and met, met him out of, out of Fulton County. A huge plane had landed and hit up one man. That's, <laughs> That's <laughs> Paul. So he came. I'll tell you something. And we met at the Commerce Club in a private room up there. Shirley was there. It was in, uh, I've forgotten who else, but. And Andy came up with a pitch. He wanted it at five points, where mm -hmm. his building is now, mm -hmm. the old First mm -hmm. National mm -hmm. parking lot back in there and so forth. And Paul said, i tell you what I'll do, Mayor. I'll promise you it'll be in the city. I can't promise you where it'll be, because mm -hmm. I don't want to go against our real estate people. And uh, said, I'll tell them about five points and so forth. So you know where they built it. Mm -hmm. They built 14th Street. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a case of, of business people working with uh, uh, you know, the city. Mm -hmm. And I can guarantee you the mayor wouldn't have done that. And I don't know any other may I think mm -hmm. maybe I haven't would or Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but Andy saw the, the yeah. working together. And if you don't use business people like that, those things don't happen, it yeah. seems like. Yeah. And you told me another story about the Merchandise Mart and how originally they, there were some folks who were interested in putting it out outside of town. How, yeah, how what happened is uh, Paul Duke when I'm in uh, Bob uh, Holder and some of them, we're going to put a, 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 a really kind of a city out on I-85. And the merchandise market was going to be the number one. And um, they were going to have restaurants mm -hmm. and everything else. And I saw some, some of the plans. And the reason, 
the reason they felt they could do that was that um, it, the rule was you had to have parking for every thousand square feet or some whatever, and it was just no parking mm -hmm. uh, down where John wanted to put it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Hartsfield, I guess it was Hartsfield, it was that, but I forget, I think it was Hartsfield. Uh, so what we'll do, we're not going to let it go outside the city. What we do, we go to the city council, we get the ruling, the zoning changed, mm -hmm. where it, you just don't have to have the <laughs> parking <laughs> place. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what it did, and that killed their, their the whole, deal. whole deal out there, and it allowed John to, to, to uh, build the Atlanta Merchandise Mart. Yeah. Imagine what uh, Uptown would be like if that hadn't happened. Without without John Portman, mm -hmm. all those buildings down there, I mean, he took it upon himself to build them all. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable what he did with practically nothing. Mm -hmm. We were renting tables and chairs and booths and everything else uh, to, the, to, to conventions and everything. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, John called me in his office it was in the, in the Bell Isle building in the parking lot, Bell Isle parking, and uh, and he wanted me to buy a bond for fifty thousand dollars, with a good interest rate to buy a bond to build the building. He called all the suppliers in. And said, I want you to buy a bond, I want you to buy a bond, I want you to buy a bond. So he got up enough money to to um, start building the merchandise. He did the same thing with the hotel, uh, you know, the Atrium. Yeah, Hyatt. Yeah, Hyatt. Yeah. And Hyatt bought it. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, that, it was disappointing to these guys that put up some money to buy the land up in on 85. Mm -hmm. But Hartsfield and John Portman, Hartsfield said, "I'll get it changed here yeah, if you'll build it." Mm -hmm. John says, "I'll build it." How far up eighty-five was it? Do you remember? I don't. I don't know. I, I never have identified, but it was close to Atlanta. Yeah, I was going to say up in those days it could have been North Hills Road. Or yeah. Park, or oh yeah. You know, but it was north. Place. It wasn't south by the airport. No, 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 no. It was north. It was up up near North Druid Hills Road. Mm -hmm. In that area, mm -hmm. Mike Yarr was doing get his it, yeah. executive park and all that. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that was. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think works. are some? Oh, come on. No, go ahead. What, so, what do you think are some? Because I don't want to wear you out. Long. You might not. You <laughs> The um, I said I don't want to wear you out, so we, oh, I we don't, don't want to wear out our wel our welcome. I so. don't care, no, it's okay. it's all right. all right. Go ahead, we'll wear him out. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy, hey, I'm fascinated mm -hmm. by all this. I love yeah, it. Yeah, I mean it is because uh, there's some of these things I've you know that we've talked about, but we've never gotten them. You know, I wasn't taking notes at the time, mm -hmm. so that's why. So, but say some more about John Portman because it is a phenomenal story, and it's clear that people in Atlanta just take for granted that they ought to that uh, all this stuff would have happened. They don't seem to appreciate what it would have, I mean, that you go to so many cities where nobody is downtown. And if if that Peachtree Center had not been built when it when he did it, what would what would Atlanta be like? Well, I agree with that. It, you know, it'd been another New Jersey city. <laughs> mm -hmm. Newark. Mm -hmm. uh, John uh, John raised right in Atlanta, in the mm -hmm. middle of Atlanta. I mean, he loves Atlanta. Mm -hmm. We've had people. I tell you another instance. Uh, Rankin Smith mm -hmm. loved Atlanta. Mm -hmm. You remember they were trying to get. He had a good deal offered him to move the team to Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember that. You remember that? Mm -hmm. He said no. It's not a dollar's issue. 
I love Atlanta. Born and raised here. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to keep the team here. And uh, unfortunately, a friend that we just buried three days John ago, Arnold. John, mm -hmm. he, he, he negotiated the deal. He took Rankin for, I mean, for a ride. Mm -hmm. Rankin was drinking a lot. And I was one of his best friends. He's, he told his kids the other night before we died that uh, he, he liked me more than other, he, all his other buddies. He had a bunch of wealthy buddies, and I was the poor guy. He said, but Charlie made all of his own. Mm -hmm. He re-inherited. Mm -hmm. so, but anyway, uh, <clears throat> John negotiated a, a bad deal on Dome. Mm. Sorry, sorry they did. And, you know, um, sorry, but anyway, uh, Arthur Blank is talking about uh, building another stadium somewhere in town on the outside. Uh, I hate to see that. I um, don't know what that will happen with the dome. Yeah. And it's going to cost taxpayers a whole lot of money. Well, I don't really understand it because the thing that's so great about the dome is you can it works so well with the um, World Congress. With the World Congress. Right. And yeah. it has that indoor space for, you know, big mm -hmm. mo boat shows and everything. Not you know. that quick story, I think yeah. I'm going. Um, <clears throat> Andy, Andy asked me to have a meeting uh, with... Uh, Rankin and Ted Turner and I've forgotten who else, uh, six or eight people. They were all talking about uh, building a, a dome or building a building. Mm -hmm. And um, we had the group, Georgia Tech, Bill Curry was there. Mm -hmm. uh, and Tech was talking about building it over where the steel plant was, which is now Atlantic Station. Mm -hmm. and so forth. We couldn't do that because it couldn't serve alcohol. Yeah. And uh, but Andy says, "Look, I got underground Atlanta on on my plate. Uh, let me get that off my plate, and we'll attack this uh, dome deal." And I th I said, right as we were leaving the meeting, and everybody was ready to go, and so forth. I said, well, why doesn't the state build this thing? Mm -hmm. it, it, the Falcons is a state building now. Mm -hmm. Rankin, it, it, the uh, stadium authority was a bad group. Mm -hmm. Bad group. Uh, but anyway, John Idaho was was then chairman of. Uh, State, I mean, the uh, don't, I mean, the World Congress. World Congress uh, mm -hmm. And I said, John, we played poker once a month. We were mm -hmm. friends, tech days. And right. I said, John, you meet with the governor every month uh, about the uh, World Congress Center. Throw out the idea of them, uh, of the state building this dome. Joe Frank Harris was the mayor. Mm -hmm. I mean, the yeah. governor. Yeah. Right. And uh, I don't know what time, time you got, but anyway, uh, John did that. And uh, the governor says, "Well, I'll appoint so and so. I forgot the guy's name. To look into it." John came up with the idea. John was always smelling a dollar, and I, you didn't get between he and a dollar. I tell you that. And uh, he he worked out a deal where uh, he could get his buddies, and I'd want to put up a hundred thousand each, and uh, it's going to be for a profit development. And uh, one of the quick stories, he asked J.B. Fuqua for 100000 and uh, and J.B. said, well, who else is in this thing? And he named all of us, and 
So that's, no one there would embarrass me. I'll do it, but under one circumstance. John said, what's that? He said, I don't have to go to any Falcon game. <laughs> <laughs> you have to know JV to appreciate that. But, he, but anyway, the a for-profit deal didn't work for some reason. But the funny thing about it, John didn't put the hundred. He, he, was, <laughs> he, he was exempt. That's right. Because he, was, he, was a, he was collecting. He, he, <laughs> yeah. I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> He was putting it well, together. Well, he was, he said, uh, he had somebody had ruled that since he was chairman of the World Congress Center, he couldn't put the hundred in. But he was, he was one of the partners. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, anyway, that's how the, <clears throat> how the dome got built. Mm -hmm. Um, there's some other stuff in there, but mm -hmm. Johnson, what's his name, Johnson, was chairman of the, of the state yes, authority, Leroy, Leroy. Leroy, Leroy Johnson. He came over and laid John out and says, no, what you're doing, we've got a black power group at state authority, and you're killing our black power group, and you can't do that. And John talked to some people and said, do it. So it was done. But uh, it was it, it was it was controversial. Let's put it mm -hmm. that way. It just didn't get built in a in a hurry. We had some preachers that loved it and others that didn't. And yeah. but he yeah. bulldozed it right on through the legislature and and he John put, did John mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. and he Joe Frank Harris didn't want he didn't want anything controversial. Mm -hmm. In his years his personality, of personality, you know. yeah, his years of um, being the governor, and he didn't want to take a position in that. Mm -hmm. But John and some of forced him into it, mm -hmm. and he finally did. Now he take credit for it. I would say that Dome's one of the great economic drivers. This oh yeah, yeah. People oh yeah. Just don't know. Yeah. I mean, I was looking at just the just the what three or four. Uh, things that the MART does every year, the economic impact of it on you all statements from the America's oh, yeah. MART. Yeah, it, I mean, that you know, half a billion it, dollars in economic from so one, you well, know, just one the of the MARTs. That, uh, all that you've done, too, to keep all that stuff downtown. Mm -hmm. You know, and I on the there. MART board, mm -hmm. did you know that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So the MART's been a big, big deal. Huge. Huge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, cool. What was the question? I forgot. Well, they, um, I think we started off talking about um, Portman. Oh, but John. then we started. But then we were talking about the. Um, oh, you were talking about Rankin was another kind of unsung hero, someone who loved Atlanta. That John loved, loved Atlanta, Atlanta and Rankin Smith really. So he he brought the Falcons, Rankin. He bought it. He yeah. brought. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He okay. Got it. Yeah. And he had partners. Mm -hmm. Paid it's sixteen million dollars. Right? Fifteen, 15 yeah, million. I think it was. Yes, yeah. but his Rankin was. Uh, he he was our rich friend. <laughs> all of us, we were all kind of wild, but he was. <laughs> he led the group, <laughs> and he had the money. <laughs> uh, uh, so there was. They, they were looking. Uh, Pete Rozelle was the cha chairman of the uh, commissioner, of the league. commissioner of mm -hmm. them. Yeah. and his he had a he had a feeling that he wanted all the owners to have uh, it be a family ownership to be a family with uh, kids that could take over the ownership when the others are gone. Mm -hmm. he, that was his. Well, that didn't last too long. But he he interviewed Rankin's kids and mm -hmm. and, and liked both Rankin Jr. and Taylor. Um, but anyway, Rankin uh, whiskey got Rankin. Mm -hmm. and when he was sober, he was the nicest, sweetest guy in America. And he would do so many things. He was chairman of Love It. Mm -hmm. And he'd get kids and love it and deny it. Just deny it. Uh, he didn't want people to know what he was doing. And 
store was the Shepherd Spinal Center with uh, you know the boy got James got got paralyzed. He was a, he wanted to go to a specialized hospital out in Denver, which now the Shepherd Center has emulated even yeah. much bigger. Right. But Rankin was going to loan Shepherd the plane to take him out there. And I was getting, I was renting hospital equipment back and got a special chair to get James in, in you know how you get in yeah, some sure. plane. Uh, but anyway, uh, Harold Shepard kept saying, that Rankin, we're going to pay you. Rankin, we're going to pay you for this. Rankin said, if you say that one more time, you don't have an airplane. Hmm. Hmm. I'm not hearing it anymore. That's, uh, wow. yeah, he's that guy. Hey, another thing about that, the Shepherd did, I don't know if you read, but, you know, he got paralyzed in, uh, what was it? South America. Yeah, yeah, Columbia. Right. He went in, he was surfing, mm. and the water went out from under him. He went down, he was, mm. they went to an old hospital in, uh, they say the windows were open and the flies were running in. He was paralyzed, laying up mm -hmm. there, completely. Mm -hmm. And uh, and he went to uh, Bo Calloway, the Secretary of the Army. Mm -hmm. And Harold Shepard went to Bo Calloway and said, uh, "Well, we'd like to get a a, a, a Air Force Army plane." A hospital type plane where you have nurses and mm -hmm. sterilized and said, uh, <clears throat> Bo said, oh, well, we can't do that. Uh, we just couldn't do that. He went to Herman Talmadge. <laughs> Herman says, You got a plane. That's right. He snapped his finger. That we'll bring our boys back from anywhere in the world. <laughs> so Herman. So and, and I think Shepard paid the government yeah. for fuel or whatever. But it was so funny that mm -hmm. Bo, as Secretary of the Army, wouldn't do it. But Senator uh, said, "Yes, we'll do that." Herman Townley. Mm. So that's how Spinal Shepherd Spinal Center came to be such a big deal. Yeah, shut it out there, and James went out there as mm -hmm. paralyzed. Mm -hmm. I went to see him. He was laying flat. I was, I don't know they used to rent him. But anyway, you'd have a patient like this, mm -hmm. and then you'd turn it, mm -hmm. turn it frame. Mm -hmm. You'd take the head mm -hmm. off. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but they, out there, he was uh, Craig Institute, they had James up uh, in a wheelchair, and then uh, kind of walking cane. And, mm -hmm. It was a special nurse over there that James brought to Atlanta when they started this hospital, and, and he married her and had children. <laughs> <laughs> a nurse. The first was he he rented some. They rented a few rooms out in the old, old uh, hospital at West Paces Ferry. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember that hospital. Yeah, it's I do been remember. Closed. That. But they they that's where they started. Mm -hmm. The uh, this thing and Rankin and I went out there to to look at this hospital and boy, people are laying up there and I I, I can't do it anymore. I can't mm. do that. Mm. I, I can't do that. You yeah, I, I think well that could be my child or mm. no, that mm. could be me mm. or that mm. could be my friends or something. Uh, money, but I I can't. That. And Rankin was the same way. He said, mm -hmm. I, I just can't do this again, Atlanta. Mm -hmm. uh, so what, um, so we all, we, so there's, there's another, so there's another kind of example of the kind of, I don't know, the kind of giving back that seems to happen in Atlanta where people don't yeah. just do for them, the, the people who aren't just doing for themselves. I hope this generation that's there feels mm -hmm. that way. Mm -hmm. Still. That's a big question. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm concerned about the leadership. Mm -hmm. Mm 
particularly people who put the money on the table. Yeah, you know, Atlanta's getting bigger and bigger and needs more and more. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not sure that we, we uh, I was pr proud that some of the Atlanta people put big money out for the Olympics. Mm -hmm. Disaster. Bill, Bill Campbell made that a flea market disaster. Mm -hmm. Honky Tonk Olympics. Yeah. That's, that's what one guy could do. His name's Summerot. He said, Yeah, Juan Antonio Summerot. Yeah, he said, He wouldn't say his best. Every year he said, I mean, every time, the best look at this time he wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. uh. It was the biggest, it's still the biggest. That's true. In terms of uh, athletes and it was, attendance. Mm -hmm. It was a terrific still event, other than. The inflatable elephant offices and a few things. Yeah. Well, and it was bad for the vendors, you know, because they didn't make any. I mean, people weren't coming to buy that kind of stuff. They were coming no. to the event. Well, they they, they sold the vendors a bad, a bad deal. And a lot of those folks. Bill Campbell. Bill you know, Campbell did all of that. Right. He was selling his friends and giving them something yeah. else. I, I almost cried when they had the. I guess it was a closing ceremony. Mm -hmm. They carried the flag out. And your father was carrying, he was one of maybe 50 people. Mm -hmm. He brought them. Yeah. He should have been up with the yeah. so-called, the, right. the Billy Payne and that, and that group up yeah. there. Yeah. And, and I don't want to take anything from Billy, but it wouldn't have happened. Right. Now Bill Dahlberg and Andy Fionn made those things. Huh? But until Andy Young and Bill Dahlberg bought the idea, nothing was happening with Billy at all. Well, let me tell you that Billy went to, to see Andy about having the, the Olympics. And to Andy's credit, he said, Andy, Andy had, he, he thought big, mm -hmm. he was a dreamer, and it was kind of a dream to have the Olympics in Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, yeah, I mean, like yeah, the Olympics was, and make yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Uh, But he says, you go go out and see Charlie and talk about the business community mm -hmm. and see if they're for it. Mm -hmm. We met at the Cherokee Club, a room right up the steps on the left, that had about maybe 10 people and <laughs> there. And, uh, Billy didn't know him more about the Olympics than anybody else. Mm -hmm. Well, he know, knew more of something. But hell, we didn't know the Summer Olympics or the Winter Olympics. That's right. I mean, <laughs> That's right. Olympics wasn't anything right. we dreamed about or right. thought about. No, yeah. But, uh, you know, I, I, Billy said, now, the Olympics in 96 will be in Athens. That's the centennial of the new Olympics. Right. I didn't know the new from the old, mm -hmm. of course. And it uh, says, then we're going to go for the next year, and if we don't get that, we certainly will go for the next. We'll get it the next. So we'll go. And, uh, and I started thinking about uh, how many years is that? Long way down was, the road. Yeah. It was about 12 years that we had a shot at it. Uh, and I, I called Billy and I said, look, I can't go to all your meetings between now and 12 years. <laughs> you right now. Uh, I'll help you any way I can to call on me and so forth. And he said he was disappointed, but he needed older businessmen. Sure. And he said, I'll get an advisory committee together and that's kind of what he did. And, uh, and we... We helped, but I went with Andy two or three places where he was, he was gathering up the votes. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it, without that, it wouldn't have happened. No, it would not have happened. And, uh, you ever, um, did you ever go to anything at the, ho at, at the house where they were entertaining? I went community? one or two of those, and one yeah. of them was at Georgia Pacific Building, one mm -hmm. meeting, I remember. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to to Washington when uh, when the president talked about a 
us get in the Olympics uh, mm -hmm. with the Rose Garden. And then mm -hmm. I was invited to go to Tokyo for, mm -hmm. for it. So I was somewhat involved. But um, well, the reason we got in mm -hmm. was uh, we were dead. Uh, Greece, Athens, Greece couldn't uh, host it. Couldn't do it. They didn't have the infrastructure. They didn't have the hotels, they didn't have the phone system, mm -hmm. the communication system. Mm -hmm. uh, it just couldn't have happened there. Mm -hmm. And so the committee looked around and and picked, uh, picked Atlanta with a lot of work. Mm -hmm. A bit of pain, a lot of people travel all over the damn uh, world mm -hmm. gathering up votes. But Andy got the third world vote. Mm -hmm. Fighting two things. Number one, the Olympics had been on continental United States, it, in Eight LA, four, yeah. LA, and mm -hmm. and Ted Turner's World Olympics or whatever. Well, there was that was irritating. Yeah, good World Olympics. Good yeah, yeah. yeah in Olympics their face. Group. So they were fighting two things, and they had to. But uh, Andy played a big role. You know, the third. Third World, uh, getting those votes. Mm -hmm. I've got a, a tile at home in my basement that I got in Greece because they were so confident they were going to get the Olympics that it says, you know, Athens, you know, Olympics, 1996, Athens, Greece. They already got well, the, the truth of it, I, the thing that I thought when they finally did get it, they still didn't do a good. I mean, I looked at, you would watch the Olympics and they had empty venues. Yeah. And the people, nobody was there. And they were beautiful, but they weren't full. Where, I mean, in Atlanta, every, Everything you couldn't, packed. you couldn't see Angola play basketball in the Atlanta Olympics. I mean, people, every venue was packed for to, every single thing. We went to two events a day. We just happened to, yeah. you know, somebody, we had a client that didn't pay his bills, but he had a lot of Olympic tickets. <laughs> <laughs> so we just kind of went to random things. I remember going to field hockey and yeah. you know, the Atlanta University oh, yeah. complex. It would oh, be yeah. packed. Oh, yeah. field uh, and you didn't know there were so many uh, Indians. Now we know, you know. But in those days, you didn't know there were so many Indians in the in the metro Atlanta area. They were all at the field hockey. Field hockey was packed, yeah. You know. And well, the best, the young president. The best contest was uh, soccer in Athens. Oh, it was great. Athens, Georgia. Mm. Well, it was big time, right? Mm. Most of the players were Carolina girls. <laughs> oh, that's right. The, Carolina, the girls. Carolina they, girls. That's yeah. the largest yeah. crowd ever. Ever. For, for, women's women's, for women's, yeah. for women's, no, for a women's athletic event. Of it was any the kind. largest wow. crowd in history. That was a great team. For yeah. a women's athletic event. Yeah. Yeah, it was. It was a good, and we won it. And the and Americans won. won it. And they made some stars. Brandy took off for. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's a historic moment yeah. in time. Right? Yeah, everybody remembers <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Although Mia was the real star. Mia, but yeah, she was North Carolina. She was North Carolina. She was North Carolina. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's about three or four of them. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and we've won the national for a number of times. Well, it's uh, it was a, uh, um, but we start we were still trying to get around to John Portman and what he's done for for. Atlanta. Well, the tragedy is they've they Atlanta hasn't really asked him to put up a building like like he has in in the East. Mm -hmm. I've not you seen them. I've heard they were phenomenal. I mean, I've seen pictures of them. Yeah. They say over there, you say Portman, mm -hmm. and that's all you have to say. You're you're number one. Mm -hmm. you, uh, if you know Portman, you know we went to Russia for the wall came down, and they knew him over there. Over there, mm -hmm. when we got off the plane in Moscow, mm -hmm. some of the uh, architects mm -hmm. wanted to meet John. Mm -hmm. Wanted to meet John. Mm -hmm. uh, big. His name is Big. Mm -hmm. He's in the middle now of a hundred. 51-story building, which would be the second largest in the world. Hmm. Wow. Uh, in the middle of bad, bad luck. He had, had an earthquake and, and he had uh, the Portland Hotel in San Francisco. The earthquake came up and he had a hundred, a little over 100% occupancy. 
and the next day had zero. <laughs> and that was tragic because nobody's going to go up on it. Right. You know, it right. didn't bother the hotel, but uh, right. you know, higher That's the yeah, one. Yeah, you know, kind of, that's the one right in Bacadero, right in downtown. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. He had a big deal. He wanted, had a black tie. He and I wouldn't go over there for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd go over there for uh, hotel dedication for mm -hmm. black tie. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah. Um, but in terms of Atlanta and built, do you remember when he was building the um, the Hyatt and and the uh, Peachtree Center and kind of what the thinking was around it? And did you say something that he originally wanted to build it in five points, but you couldn't get the Muses property? No, Can that was a banking that deal. That wasn't John. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's a train story. Uh, they let the. They gave the building to the employees, and the employees elected one guy, I can't think of his name, and he would not sell that Muses building. Was it Muses? One of, one of the clothing stores. He wouldn't sell it under any condition, and they had everything else, everything else, mm -hmm. except this one building. And it was right in the middle. Yeah, right in the middle. And, you know, that was, that was not good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, we've, uh, we've had good, good uh, cooperation from, from the, from the landlords, mm -hmm. basically. We had not had any real bad landlords that, that I've read about in other cities mm -hmm. and so forth. That's mm -hmm. the worst one. Mm -hmm. And uh, the tragic. But we had, we had my son and I had got involved in the, the one that Buckhead landlords. Yeah, that we, was we bought we bought the properties. Wow, that was a pretty serious deal there. You got some, I imagine you got some death threats and all kinds of things in that deal. I was very concerned. Yeah. Uh, I think so. He was closing up these uh, bars that were selling dope and mm -hmm. and uh, and all that stuff, and mm -hmm. I was very concerned. But he was he was closing them up. What we did, we went to the <coughs> landlords, mm -hmm. and uh, and he got uh, government agencies involved in. Uh, and the zoning and the everything, and we got Bart, somebody who was a Georgia Revenue Commissioner. They put uh, uh, policemen up on our, in our building with cameras down, looking at all of this. You remember they're killing each other. You remember all that? Oh, I mean, absolutely. Yeah, we had forgotten how many, uh, but but surely. Um, Cooperated mm -hmm. with us. What happened? We, you had to get the landlords. The landlords were getting money under the table. Mm -hmm. um, they the other way on everything. Cash, mm -hmm. and they knew what was happening in those buildings. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, but it was a dollars and cents thing. And between me and you, I started the Bucket Coalition, and we. We were trying to get Sam Marcel mm -hmm. to get on the landlords. He wouldn't do it because they were his friends. They were Jewish. They were his friends. Mm -hmm. So Robin just went around him to the they uh, had police and then, mm -hmm. uh, the going up and down Peachtree and blowing the horns and you know Ram like. It was like the Freaknik and every Saturday yeah, night, sure. you mm -hmm. remember all that? So, mm -hmm. ran them all off, put them in jail, and they wouldn't do it again. <laughs> but it, uh, well, it turned out, well, well, we were paying $2 a square foot for the land, and uh, we sold it for four. Mm -hmm. 
but it was a gamble at two. Mm -hmm. I mean, oh, wow. mm -hmm. the price was about a dollar a square foot, mm -hmm. now, you know, not a front foot. But, mm -hmm. So it worked out pretty well. And the reason Ben Carter came to us and wanted us to, he wanted to develop that block on, on, on uh, Buckhead Avenue. Right. And, and we owned two lots in there. He wanted us to be partners. Well, my daughter had married his brother, had been married to the brother. So I, we knew the Carter family well. So we said, all right. But he did the demogra demographics of this whole area mm -hmm. and said there's no better demographics anywhere in the country mm -hmm. than there because the, what are you talking about the wealth? Right. Purchasing power. Mm -hmm. And Bucket's got it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, you don't have any rivers that stop you, you don't have any mountains and, mm -hmm. and uh, so forth. And they figured that the politics was good enough. And mm -hmm. so uh, Ben came back and said, I just like to run the whole thing, the whole. Mm -hmm. all, all of it, five blocks, he'd mm -hmm. charted it all out, yeah, just right. that and the other. We said, good, good luck. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he, four dollars that we charged was probably the lowest. Mm -hmm. Some of those guys were running it up to six and eight dollars. Mm -hmm. He paid way too much a lot for the land. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's one of the problems. But they started back on that. Did you ever go out there and party? What party? No, that was before Bucket. her time. Yeah. Before her time, huh? Yeah. yeah. You were seven, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I just moved to Atlanta in oh yeah. four. Mm -hmm. so. She was a baby. <laughs> <laughs> No, nah, but what I miss is is the original underground. That's what I miss. That's right. That was a when, popping when, place. When Dante's was in the underground. Dante's down the hatch. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's that, I, the bank notes was, was another one. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. yeah. I had a lot of. That was a yeah. fun place to yeah. go. The blue. What was the the place I heard Lou Rawls there? House of Blue. There was. No. A, it was a. It was a dinner club. We yeah. listen to remember. music yeah. and had dinner. I mean. How do you remember no. Lou? I was trying to remember Lou Rawls. Yeah. Yeah. I had a big fundraiser at my house with Lou Ross. Mm -hmm. A tent in the backyard. Mm -hmm. We had mm -hmm. three or four hundred people there. I mean, mm -hmm. it was a big deal. You did all that stuff with Budweiser back then? Remember Lou Ross and Budweiser? Yeah, it, mm -hmm. it was for uh, County Commissioner uh, Rob Pitts. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. yeah. he was always, uh, you know, yeah, I mean, he really got. Did so much for the United Girl College Fund, Lou Rawls. Yeah, he really uh -huh. with, he and, him and Budweiser just really supported I all the remember that. fundraisers. And you never came to the Mayor's Mass Ball. We have to get you to one. I you did, and one? I brought Rankin and his wife yeah. there one. Because that was my mother's two. big thing. Was yeah, the Mayor's it Mass was. Ball. Uh, we went, my wife Rankin and mm -hmm. his so-called. Was a new new wife at that time, mm -hmm. Charlotte. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's all. I mean, Lou Rawls really helped to get all those. They raised over. I mean, with uh, when Cassine came to the first one when he was mayor, and he said we're going to break all the records, he, and so he just kept up there till people coughed it up. They you know they they raised more money. I think it was like one point two million dollars. You don't catch me at many of those places. Anymore, <laughs> you know. If I never go to another one, it'll be okay. Exactly. <laughs> I've done my share. You got in your scrapbook. I've done my share of meetings and big balls and all that kind of That's stuff. Right. My wife, about two years ago, we went to a black tie dinner. As we got in the car to leave, she said, well, that's it. That's the last one for me. That's the world record. <laughs> <laughs> and she will ask me again. I, that's right. I'll take my daughters every once in a while. She will not go with my wife. Well, in Atlanta, home. you can go to one every night. That's right. <laughs> that's exactly right. Yeah. So you really I can tell you right now, your daddy worked his tail off. He had an energy level that... Yeah. Remarkable. Very few people have, have ever had. Yeah. He was campaigning. Yeah. 
Um, it was it's controversial back then. I mean, I, I didn't know about him getting shot or something. Mm. It wasn't... He can talk his way out of anything, though. He's the best public speaker ever. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Well, that's the one. That was one of the things that impressed me about Kasim is he said, you know, I'm. He said, no one. I'm not gonna lose this race because anybody outworked me. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he it was close. Ethic. I worked because I. I mean, I. But you know, but. But yeah, no, he does. Uh, my dad does work. Uh, oh work God, I, he couldn't. I couldn't halfway keep up with him. So you can't. <laughs> I told. I told when he was out speaking. <laughs> I said, Andy, don't get too close to me, because if they shoot at you and miss, I don't want to hit them. <laughs> That's probably not comforting words. <laughs> that, that wasn't very comforting to him, <laughs> was it? He, he would slip out and come over here and talk to me. Basically about Northside, what, what Northside people mm -hmm. were thinking. Mm -hmm. he, I mean, Andy and I never, I mean, we didn't agree to everything, but mm -hmm. we cared enough for each other to sure. disagree, but still feel like good. Mm -hmm. He had his opinion, I had mine. We didn't, we didn't, weren't mad about either one of us. It seems like one of the things that you've been remarkable at over the years is just that working behind the scenes with the the leadership of the city. I mean, obviously you're part of the leadership, but uh, not everyone who's done well, even, you know, I mean, it, God knows uh, John Portman's done a lot, but there aren't many people who uh, who do what you do relative to sort of supporting the city and making things work. Who are some of the others? I mean, who are some of the people that you've seen that, you know, are in this group that sort of supports what the good things that go on in the city like that, give advice? And... I don't know. Yeah, well, older Larry Gellis, that was one. And, uh... I can't remember the, the rest of them. I can tell you what all of them did, if you want to name them. <laughs> yeah. I was watching, but I forget. I forget. Yeah, really, I mean, hardly, it's so less than a handful. That's, right. I mean, it's, you know, you can count them on your one hand or less. Yeah, a lot of it, have, you know, well, it, it, it said they did, but, uh, didn't, hadn't done much. Mm -hmm. no. They got on the wagon after the wagon was rolling. <laughs> yeah, you know, the bandwagon gets heavy sometimes. So yeah, what? What did? Yeah. What? What would you say about Larry Gallistat? What was he? Well, doing? he was. I, well, he, I was just listening to his son last night, so mm -hmm. I thought about that. Uh, but he he worked behind the scenes he, to get things done. Uh, you know, Marta, uh, a lot of people who that worked on Marta uh, mm -hmm. that made it happen. Uh, and that, I guess that's the one thing I could, could give uh, Sam myself credit. Is, mm -hmm. uh, uh, he was kind of the father of getting Marta done, mm -hmm. which was the number of people who worked on getting 400 done. And it was chairman of, of the two or three, uh, the older chairman of, uh, of uh, MARTA, they worked a lot. I, 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 I just damn near lost my business working on MARTA. My sector said I had over 300 meetings <laughs> outside of my office mm. relative to MARTA. What uh, was happening at the time? What were they, what was the... Well, the big big issue mm -hmm. was uh, four hundred, mm -hmm. up four hundred. Mm -hmm. Your dad made a made a speech in Shamley when he was running for mayor. He was against it, but uh, <laughs> we put him in a helicopter and flew the route mm -hmm. and stopped at some of the uh, companies. One of them was Herman Miller. Mm -hmm. Another one. You think of another one. But they were talking about um, having to bus people in to work. Mm -hmm. And Andy asked, Well, what do you pay them? And it's something like 
a lot more than they were getting anywhere else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, with that, uh, he kind of changed his mind. Not bad. See, idea. Maynard was unsent against it. Mm -hmm. The reason he had in his brain that the wealth was created in downtown Atlanta and going out to the suburbs. <coughs> and that's, mm -hmm. he didn't want to encourage that, that mm -hmm. they were, right. that uh, the wealth was just, it was a one way street. Mm -hmm. And then he saw, saw that the two way street, that the workers, mm -hmm. downtown Atlanta workers, are making whatever, three dollars an hour, mm -hmm. could go out there and ten dollars an hour, mm -hmm. or whatever it was, mm -hmm. that, that, that that train goes both ways. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that that's how that got done. So that was a big so that was all these community meetings around this whole issue of Georgia four hundred and then MARTA going out as part of it? Well MARTA I, you know, we're dedicating this mm -hmm. I've gotten all the controversy mm -hmm. in, involved in it, uh, the dollars and, and that, that getting my 400 up there was a big deal. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't think anybody, foresee, did you foresee, did anyone foresee the growth that it would mean for Buckhead? I mean, that you would have all these scots for Buckhead? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I guess so. At times I wondered whether that was good or not. Yeah. <laughs> The old bucket was great yeah. <laughs> when, when I was going to school there. And, yeah. uh, when there was a casual Marta, corner, on the, I remember when there was a casual corner right there at like where Roswell and Peach Street split and Bailey Banks and Goodall. Back years ago, I, you know, I went to the theater mm -hmm. when I was 11 or 12. That's the reason I mm -hmm. have that feeling of the theater. But uh, you used to walk around in, in Bucket and you'd know mm -hmm. half half, two-thirds of the people mm -hmm. that you ran to, everybody talked to each other, it's mm -hmm. a small town. Mm -hmm. That's true. And, you know, all of us mm -hmm. love those little small towns, mm -hmm. and right. five and ten cent stores and and all of that. Uh, yeah. But, you know, it's, that's, that's progress. Uh, I, I, uh, I don't know. I I I, I shouldn't feel, feel that way, but I have a friend. That I I don't agree with this, but the feeling I have a friend in Bill Payne. He's show me an active chamber of commerce. He lives in Oklahoma City. Mm -hmm. I'll show you a crappy town. <laughs> <laughs> That's the Oklahoma City feeling. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's where. The, I think I remember when that old Sears building opened over there. It was that was a big deal. I remember the Sears opened right on the. Uh, um, West Paces Ferry. Yeah, it was right there on West Paces Ferry. The yeah, Sears where the uh, where the St. Regis is. Where the St. Regis. Yeah, we got a Sears building. Over there. Yeah, that was a big deal. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. That was a fancy Sears. We used to drive because I used to go to Trinity right down so. You know that Go that Sears. Sears was like a Bloomingdale's as far as I was That's concerned. Right. Was a big town. <laughs> We're the only place you have to. When I grew up, the uh, we had Northside High, North Fulton, and mm -hmm. and Westminster. And the only way you knew all of the kids from each one is you'd all go to Zesto's. Remember Zesto's? Mm -hmm. right Zesto's, there, yeah. Head. We'd go up there. And the Buckhead Men's Shop. I, I remember Men's Shop, all. Right. Uh, Thompson Bow and Lee Shoe Store. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have, they've sprung off from riches. Mm -hmm. yeah. And open that. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I miss the chocolate chip cookies at Rich's. Oh, that's right. Oh, really? <laughs> most, well, the most embarrassing thing in my teenage years happened at Thompson Bowl and Lee. I had $15 to go to Thompson Bowl and Lee to get some Weegeons. Because everybody had Weegeons. They had to wear Weegeons. Mm -hmm. I showed up mm -hmm. in there, and this lady looked at me, and she said, I'll sell you some Weegeons, but you know if they're not going to be in style in another couple of months. And I said, really? I said, what, what's going to be in style? And she said, black and white saddle Oxford. I, I'd never seen a guy wear black and white. <laughs> and she talked me into those, man, for the next two months. I was trying to hide my shoes. <laughs> <Really? laughs> but she was right. She was a good salesperson. About the time I was wearing out, everybody else started wearing those things. Oh, is that right? She, 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 she had, sold a lot of those. She had you ahead of the curve. Well, that's good. I use uh, at Sears experience when I'm talking to some 
business people. I went in there one time to buy some little nuts and bolts for something I was doing at the house. It took me about 30 minutes to get that box because they had the machines and they were just getting into the machines. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> Feed it all in there. And they, all these numbers and back and forth, and, and they know how to work it and all that. <laughs> and I said, I'm not going to Sears anymore. I, I, I'm not going to spend my life, you know, going to Sears <coughs> for nuts and bolts or whatever it's going to be. So, so I remember that well. All well, those early computers, they were. Yeah. They were yeah, trying to get. Computer world, and no one knew how to do it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ted Turner in those early days went to, we took you know trafficking of commercials, marked down the commercials by hand. And he um. suddenly got com computers, and we had them for maybe three months, and we shut them down because we never could figure out when the commercials were going to run. <laughs> Started doing it by hand again. Okay. Well, um, any anything? We never quite did get to John, but. Maybe on another. But uh, anything well, come to mind about any good story you got for us? What you ought to do is, John has a, a, a tremendous uh, film. Mm -hmm. They I've just did it. it. Did you mm -hmm. see it? I've seen that. Mm -hmm. I, I should try to get a copy of it, though. I don't have a copy. The, guy, it is super? the filmmaker said he was going to send one to my dad, so I need to... Yeah. Get that. Yeah. And I also had the book, you know, from the um, exhibit at the high. Uh, yeah, I've like got all the books, you know. They, that is a documentary on yeah. Port Portland. Yeah. And after the show, I asked for kind of questions. And, uh, and I said the number one thing that I, I I'm, John's been a close friend of mine for many years, the number one thing I admire about John is he's had a balance of family and work. And a lot of people don't have that balance. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, I think that's about the strongest thing you can say about a, a person. Mm -hmm. If the, uh, if the multifast, whatever you want to call it, that, uh, and he's had a hard time with some of that. It's, with six kids, his kids have had the same problems that a lot of other kids mm -hmm. have with discipline, or whatever you call it. Mm -hmm. But he's been in the middle of it, mm -hmm. and he and his wife Jan have mm -hmm. been married to the same gal mm -hmm. all those years. Mm -hmm. but that John is, you know, he's just brilliant in in, uh, and what in he architecture does. and what he does. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Uh, he's another Frank Lloyd Wright, mm -hmm. you know, with his architecture. He's uh, influenced the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and thank God they named that street after him yesterday, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Finally. Finally. It was, so, it was the dumbest thing. I went to one, of, I testified at one of the hearings. Oh, did you? And, um, you know, it, it just, the people, the crowd that was against it, I mean, it just was, it was just ridiculous. Yeah. It's just well, ridiculous. And, well, the guy that represented Northside, mm -hmm. he voted against it. I called him. Mm -hmm. and shook. Mm -hmm. I was yeah. shook. Yeah. Why? It's crazy. Why would he vote against it? And I, <laughs> I got very upset with him. And I said, listen, we're going to get that damn street named if I have to spend a million dollars. Well, that I ended up. <laughs> well, then he went around and told everybody that I was willing to spend a million dollars to honor John in something other than the street. Hmm. Hmm. I didn't say that. Hmm. Hmm. He, he was trying to sell me on the idea to do something else for, for John Portman and so, you know. Well, John right. has developed all that in there, and he mm -hmm. told me this. Mm -hmm. To him, that's the number one thing in his life that he wanted to get done. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it was a mm -hmm. very, and he just told me that mm -hmm. again within the last mm -hmm. four or five days. Mm -hmm. Wow. 
Uh, and he, 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 mo he got emotional about it. I mean, he, was, he didn't like the idea that these people were against him. Yeah. But, it was, I mean, but everything he'd done for Atlanta right, right. and for Say No, yeah. uh, he just didn't understand. Because he wasn't asking for it in the first place. He didn't once, start. Once I he, think I it may was have, a great I mean, it was a great I idea. might have suggested it mm -hmm. first, but hell, that was five or ten years ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It should have been done five or ten years ago, too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but thank God it's done now. Yeah. I hope it's not contested or anything yeah. else. Because yeah. I think my dad went down. Good. They did. Uh, he and he and your dad really care for each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and, really. and this was, yeah. this, you know, there. Um, but it, and that, you know, that's one of the reasons for sort of this book and project is that, you know, people need to understand why they enjoy the quality of life that they can have in Atlanta. That people have yeah. made, spent, gone to three hundred meetings. So they can take Marta from Shambly to the airport. They people have, mm -hmm. you know, put up their own capital and built things like Peachtree Center. People have, you know, have put stuff on the line to to have um, the Hawks and ha mm -hmm. have the things that we've got in this city. But you know what I've been thinking. I got research to see what why Dallas is doing so well, but. It seemed to me that things have been done. You've had basically one person that got behind it and said, "By God, I'm going to do it mm -hmm. and get out of the way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're not going to stop me." Mm -hmm. We we don't have that now. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I was thinking yesterday, even the transportation thing. There's no face to it. There's nobody driving it through. That's correct. I guess the most recent time that happened was, um, was say, Pete Corral helped to get the grading thing yeah. done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It just put common business sense mm -hmm. to it and, mm -hmm. and turned that thing around. Mm -hmm. I, I hope, uh, is it back? Is it going backwards now? Yeah, I, you know, I'm not sure. I, I don't, I've heard not good things about the new, um, administrator um, and that he doesn't have the experience he's never been the CEO but you know which one is this this is the new um, the new CEO for Brady no it's not the one that's stepping down it's no the not the one that's leaving but the one um, and that they the one that's leaving that there was sort of a I guess a 12 million dollar hole that they kind of had um, had it? had it really it. shown you know that it was Kind of being a little bit, you know, covered up, covered up. It's happened with him a few things. I mean, you can be very smart and not very impressive. Well, that would have been his. Yeah. Well, really he, uh, well, you know, he just to. went to say something about shining shoes. <laughs> about what? <laughs> he said something about they need to shine my shoes because um, I guess, you know, because he thought he had done such a great job. But that's not, you know, that kind of. Um, yeah, Arrogance is not doesn't go over well in Atlanta. Well, it go over well anywhere. <laughs> you know, you want to say, you know, we, you know, we've got a great team here, and a lot of people have you know, worked to make this happen, and you know, I mean, that's the kind of because I mean, a, a hospital is a, I mean, you read about trying to get a hospital together just medically, you know, every. And then, like you, I mean, in a complicated organization, everybody in your organization can ruin it. Right. <laughs> you know, if they don't, if they're not on board, so how do you? Um, yeah, I mean, well, well, they'll say one apple can spoil a whole barrel. That's right. One that's, bad apple can spoil. Yeah. That's yeah. very true. But <clears throat> your leaders, uh, they get rid of that apple. Mm -hmm. Right. Or straighten them out. Right. The only thing I ever got mad at your daddy about mm -hmm. is uh, he wouldn't take that city council on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, they're gonna they're gonna end up doing it well. Yeah. See, no, they're killing you. Mm -hmm. They are killing you on your, your mm -hmm. issues that you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. You ought to jump to some of them and knock heads and, and knock heads and 
tell them to go to their community and say, you got a bad representative here. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't do that. And uh, he's too nice and too sweet well, he's a preacher, guy. Anyway, I think. Well, he's a preacher, you know. Yeah. <laughs> First, when I talked to him, he, was, uh, he told me, he said, I'm not a businessman, I'm a preacher. I, I, I'm uncomfortable with money or whatever. He was first time he talked to me about sport. I said, I said, Andrew, let me tell you something. You and I don't get along too That's well right. on that. <laughs> don't say that to anybody. Else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got to talk about that. That's fine. <laughs> money makes a lot of things happen. Mm -hmm. uh, That's right. Lack of money makes a lot of bad things happen. That's right. Yeah. But anyway, he he. He turned out to be a really a, a business person. Oh yeah, brain. Mm -hmm. He changed mm -hmm. changed around from preacher mm -hmm. to politician, I guess. What? Mm -hmm. anyway. well, he knew how to make a lot of people work hard, didn't he? Unbelievable. Un 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 unbelievable. He's an unbelievable person. And his ability to talk. Stunning. Unreal. Well, he's sort of the constant. Somebody was telling me there. You run into two types, two extremes in business sometimes. There are those who walk into a room and say hello, and instantly half of the room's upset. Mm -hmm. And then there are those who walk in a room and say hello, and instantly the room's together. Mm -hmm. He has that mm -hmm. ability to mm -hmm. sort of pull together. I don't want to leave, but I'll tell you a quick story. Right, right after the election, mm -hmm. the morning after we had a breakfast out at. Uh, the guy that has the uh, McDonald's, uh, Mac, Wil Mac Wilber's house <coughs> in the uh, at Pershing Point Not area, sure. mm -hmm. and I election just over that that night, you know, and I got Andy off to the side, the little room. I said, Andy, you you probably won't know what I want for all the. Stuff I, I, I did a lot. So you did a lot, lot of money, a mm -hmm. lot of everything else. And he looked at me like, "What is this?" And I said, <laughs> "Nothing. Mm -hmm. I'm closing a chapter of my life about this. Moving on. And, and I'm gonna leave it. Don't call me. I'll call you." <laughs> <laughs> and that we ended it right there. That's crazy. And it was about two or three years later before we. Everybody thought I'd be down at City Hall, you know, I'd go down there at all. I had nothing to do down there. Well, you got done what you wanted yeah, to do. Yeah, I done, right yeah, and, uh, but, uh, but that's kind of the interesting thing, you know, because your business doesn't really, there's not that much that it, difference it makes to your business as long as there's just a general, good general business atmosphere, who's mayor. But, and so for you to have made that, Commitment was really a love for the city. Well, I was born and raised here, yeah. Andrew. That's my city. Mm -hmm. And if I can help it, I want to help it. Mm -hmm. uh, but he, he came to, there was a guy named Joel Goldberg who uh, was president of Riches, and he went around telling everybody that uh, Charlie's never done anything he can get money for, and he's going he's gonna, to own City Hall, they're going to lease it back to the city, and all this kind of garbage, and, you know, stupid stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and I was very upset about it because he was a fellow Rotarian. Sure. And uh, he's president of riches and so forth. For two or three years later, Andy he came to me and said, I want you to go on the Marta board. I said, Andy, you remember what we talked about? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. He said, well, let me tell you something. He said, Joel Goldberg is on the board, and he wants to be the chairman. It's Atlanta's time to be the chairman. It would rotate on the three different yeah, sure. companies. He says, I would like for you to go on there. And I said, well, let me sleep about it, think about it. Well, hell, I'd never been on the train. <laughs> I told my wife, I said, I don't know that he's ever been on the train <laughs> either. <laughs> That's right. I told my wife, I said, you know, I might do that. And uh, so we got to go out and ride the train. <laughs> so we rode it that night, <laughs> north, south, and east, and west. And uh, 
So I, that's how I ended up being on, on the Marta board. <laughs> and I got too involved in it, you know. But that's why you too are much, to get into something. Too much, uh, I paid too much on that thing. And when, I tell you, our company, I split the company up in three divisions and four divisions. Turned it over to these guys to run. My, you know, that's what the Harvard Business School was trying to do, you know. <laughs> But it didn't work. It didn't work, <laughs> that's right. They started fighting each other, yeah. building walls around their division and so, wouldn't uh, cooperate and, and the company started doing this yeah. and uh, You gotta have somebody with a magic touch up there at the top. Yeah, you know, in, uh, touch yeah. Out a long way. But anyway, uh, still trying to tell my guys now, I, I do know this rental business. Yes. <laughs> Fifty five years. I would think that's true. <laughs> a little that's bit more true. than they do, but but anyway, that's how the, the Marta board deal ended up, and he, uh, they came up with, who was going to be the chairman, and uh, a group wanted a, a black fellow to be the chairman, I've forgotten who he was. Oh, uh, he, had, he had some, I don't know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter, mm -hmm. but they had, they had a, a group called the Black Action Forum, mm -hmm. and uh, they wanted for this guy who I mean, he, he had an ice cream parlor at the at the uh, at the Atlanta Big airport. Board. Big guy. Uh, anyway. Brad Hubbard. What's Brad? But anyway, mm -hmm. Andy went to the. Black Action Forum mm -hmm. and says, I won't, I won't allow them ever to. Mm -hmm. For, finally, everybody on there wanted me to say, I, after I decided to design, after three years of all that, I told Andy, I said, mm -hmm. I got to get, I got to get out of here. I'm, mm -hmm. I, just, I just got to get it. Go back to he what said, you told him before. He said, you just stay as long as you can stand it mm -hmm. and then let me know. And with that, um, I stayed another, I guess the whole year, but I didn't take a real active part in it, you know, I just kind of let it go. And I groomed a guy to do it, David Chestnut, yeah. who was a good guy, and I uh, groomed him to be the chairman. Anyway, mm -hmm. I know y'all y'all ready to, you getting hungry? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, this is great. Well, yeah. thank you. Thank you so much. Because we will, uh, we may, we, you know, we, fortunately, you know, we have a... Um, Thank you very much. We do, we have a video as part of this, but we've got good video on you, but we may Who want else to are you talking? Well, we we keep trying to talk to John Portman, but he keeps rescheduling. Um, and uh, we get an appointment, but I, you know, obviously if he can make, you Tell know, he's got to go work. Tell okay. him we've talked. Okay. John and I kind of follow each okay. other. Okay. <laughs> the, um, on video, one mm -hmm. thing is to make sure you know it's available. The um, Charlie's getting honored with the Four Pillar Award in October. Okay. And they've interviewed, I want to say, 12 people extensively. They're doing a video, and mm -hmm. it's magnificent. I mean, the Who is the sponsor have. for that? Is that? It's the... Uh, uh, Council on Quality Growth, Michael Paris. And, okay. And um, for the record, I I didn't want I didn't. I'm glad. I'm sorry I did it. <laughs> I've done enough of that. Well, you know what? This is going to be a nice one. This video is yeah. going to be quite a tribute. And they, and they've got. I mean, they could do a three-hour movie. It's amazing how much yeah. stuff they have. Yeah, yeah. They well, wanted me to be. In the, the, Horatio Alger deal, and I turned it down. I really made uh, well, Rollins, Randall Rollins. Randall he Rollins. had agreed. Oh, sure. Mm. He, he 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 runs that thing. Seems yeah. like. And,